Ahoy, and welcome, welcome to Fallout, Dead Man's Cash. This being the second episode of Fate Quest. This is a fate RPG in which our intrepid players will be exploring the, the wasteland of the Fallout universe. We are live on YouTube, Rumble, and X, formerly Twitter. So if you enjoy some RPG gaming, some fun role play, pull up a chair. If you thought that the uh, Fallout show was not as much as you wish it had been, as is the case with me, well, you've come to the right place. Or if you just love the Fallout universe and the Fallout show, well, pull up a chair. Uh, so we're going to have some fun tonight. All right, let's see if we can bring in some of our players. We have... Uh, we have... William Kurosawa... He is uh, playing our resident gunslinger, Samurai Par Excellence. Konnichiwa, Pilgrim. Long Konnichiwa. days and nights. Indeed, sir. Let's bring in uh, our resident synth slash Mr. Gutsy, and that would be Delta. Ahoy, Delta. Welcome aboard. Got some background uh, noise there, William. Forgive me, it's my little brother. He's being a bit of an ass. I didn't I know I was help. muted. Well, uh, I was going to say salutations in binary, but um, I didn't want to take five minutes to say it. So there yes. we go. A wise precaution indeed. <laughs> All right. How's everyone doing tonight? I'm ready. Dude, I we're ready to go. I think we got Carl. Is Carl our resident? Uh, he, he's sort of a stealth ninja type. Yes, yes. Carl is a boy. Thank you, thank you. Good evening, everyone. It's good to good be back. Good evening. We, I think we're just looking for Sunny Slaughter. Yeah, I've touched bases with her. I told her to take that link. Okay. But she's in that chat, so that might be an issue, too. Okay, well, we'll see if we can get her in here. All right. So 
So let let's do this. Yeah, uh, if your if your character's not participating in the scene and you've got some background noise going on, just mute that uh, until you're until you come in, and that will just help out with uh, background noise. Um. All right. Well, I think we're gonna we're gonna kind of start rolling here. So let me see if I can share my screen. Let's see what we got. Uh, yeah. Here we go. So you guys should all be logged into Miro, and you should be able to follow my cursor. And yes. I'm gonna share this. Hang on. Very nice. Uh, just sending a quick message here. So, uh, any, th any thoughts you want to share about your characters, uh, feelings you have about the events of the last episode? What are you thinking is going to happen here in, uh, episode two? Well, after I heroically tried to save Far Harbor by taking down a helicopter with my two twin revolvers and promptly smashing one of their houses with hopefully nobody inside, Collateral damage. Fingers crossed, of course. I <laughs> headed straight back to the group as they were climbing up a mountain. And, well... Previously on Dead Man's Cash. I do not know that, sir. And we apparently... <laughs> I don't want to do the summary, sir. I'm going to leave that up to you. But a lot of things happened. A lot of things happened in the span of what four hours well five and a half but a lot of things happened in a smaller amount of time than that but there was a lot of times where not so much happened while we figured out how to play the game <laughs> and hopefully we have had enough time to learn and we won't run into that problem it, it should go much smoother this week yes Yes, yes sir. indeed. Forward, I'm using sir. a new platform, and since uh, Roll20 is not working for me, so we're just trying to get that set up. So bear with us, folks. Um, if you're watching on the restream, you know, fortunately, you have the skip button uh, if you need it. All right. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, William Kurosawa, you, you still need to update your profile name in uh, Miro. Oh, um, so it won't let me. So I, upper left hamburger, you went to the hamburger menu and then you went to preferences where, and then you went to that? profile hamburger menu in the upper left corner. That's the three I lines. See, I see. Okay. Main menu. Uh, okay. where do I go now? Preferences. Okay. Profile settings. Okay. And then it should it. be right at the top. Change your name to William Kurosawa. All right. Thank you. There we go. That's Rondo. Uh, that would be uh, Delta's doing. The, our resident synth figured that out for us. You, you see, that's why, that's why he's the man. Robot. Thing. I mean, I just had to code a quick algorithm. And, you know. All right. Nothing so let me know when that's done. And uh, I'm going to review a couple of things that happened in the last episode. So just bear with me a second here. So we're we're gonna we're gonna do a little bit of a Good. a little bit of a flashback because uh, I was balancing a lot of things in that first episode, and uh, I feel like some of the exposition fell by the wayside. So just bear with me a second here. Uh, but you were in Far Harbor, and I think we're going to go with, uh, let's go with maybe this one. Let's just go with our, our main theme here for Dead Man's Cash. So you were in Far Harbor, and you were meeting with the Guild Master, Jack McGuire. So... Uh, the Commonwealth is under siege. It is 15 years after the events of Fallout 4. And Khazar's Legion has showed up in an aircraft carrier off the coast of Old Boston. And uh, the Minutemen are losing the war. And so Garvey sent, uh, sent for help from his spymaster, who in turn sent for U-5. 
uh, or you three, such as you are at the moment. And uh, he, he summoned you to Far Harbor to let you know that there is one possible hope to rescue the Commonwealth, and that is the vast horde of gold bullion, along with some other secret treasures, that were once hoarded long ago by the Enclave, but then were stolen by Khazar's Legion, and then the Brotherhood of Steel, and then stolen back by the Enclave over the course of decades. And now the treasure, which is thought to be lost forever, a clue has been unearthed. And so there you were in Far Harbor listening to the Guildmaster explain to you that he felt you were the only people in the Commonwealth in his entire search that could actually succeed in recovering this treasure because it is said to be cursed. Every man that has attempted to recover it has failed. And so one of the things that the Guildmaster said, and actually, uh, uh, have we updated updated things. Let me hang, hang on. Okay, yeah, we got Kurosawa's updated. Good. So I'll share screen now. We'll see how this works. I think uh, I think this will be cool for the folks at home. All right, there we are. Isn't that beautiful? Dead man's cash. I like it. All right. Now, you on your screen if you you should be able to follow let me know if you're seeing the zooms as I zoom in. Yeah, I see them. Okay, cool. Uh -huh. So I got all your character sheets here. So we're going to talk about Jack McGuire, the guild master. So he's kind of, uh, he is the, the guild master of all these caravans and the secret weapon of Preston Garvey because he has this vast network of contacts, little birds, if you will. And so in his... Uh, in suite in Far Harbor, he was explaining to you the nature of the hollow tape that he's passing to you. And what he ex and what he explained was, now, gentlemen, I am a man. This is a flashback now. I am a man possessed of many talents, and I have not survived as long as I have without having a network of spies. Now, I, you will believe me when I tell you that this is trustworthy information. When the Minutemen invaded the Institute, they found a data file. They extracted it successfully, but it was encrypted. And over these many years, I have worked tires, tirelessly on its decryption, as have many others. You are not the first to seek this clue. And then when he passed through the holotape, he explained, what I have decrypted is an identify friend foe signal designed by the Enclave to allow entrance into their base. With this IFF, you will be able to penetrate their defenses. The Enclave may be gone, but their technology remains. In the West, near the town, near the town of let's see where uh let me pull up the map actually because i have a map for this because he explains that where you're going is yeah so this is basically a map of the west and he is saying that uh somewhere south of of hoover dam okay yeah that's where it is so south of hoover dam there is an old installation. It is now defunct. The Enclave has abandoned it after the fall of their oil platform in the west and President Eden in the east. There is nothing left of them. They've gone into hiding. In this base, you will find a computer file, and with this IFF, you will be able to access it. And on this file is a map that will show you the location of the dead man's catch. But you should be aware have to have your wits about you. There could be any manner of traps deep in that vault. And who can say what dangers are there? I can get you there, gentlemen and lady, but it will be up to you to recover the treasure. I have chosen you for your unique talents, and for more than that, and of 
On that subject, I will say no more. You have all received a file from me. A private file. You may share it with your companions if you choose, or you may keep it to yourself. But in addition to your share of the treasure, upon recovery of the dead man's cash and its delivery successfully to the Commonwealth, you will receive the other promises of gifts I have included in those secret communiques. Uh, and so it looks like Sunny Slaughter needs a little help here. Right, Hang on one second. That. Yeah, yeah so talk that amongst research. yourselves. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask you two what you saw or who you thought the MVP was last week because I have a very definite idea. I don't honestly know. I was. You don't have, right off the top of your head, have a, an opinion about that? Well, I can tell you what the funniest part was when Delta stood there for hours trying to break down the nuclear reactor, effectively. <laughs> That's my MVP. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, he stood tall. He stood tall. Who the shit? What about you, Rondo? Who was your MVP? I mean, not to sound prideful, but yours truly. Uh, yeah. Wow. But let's not forget what William did. Now he's pretty hard on himself, so he doesn't see that as a total win. But the work he did down on the docks. I mean, come on. Give it up! Oh, gee, guys. I'm, I'm embarrassed. <laughs> Wait, was that an official fallout map? It is, actually. Uh, I'm just working on getting Sunny Slaughter in here, and then we'll get this story rolling. Okay. Right. Yeah, so this is, this is kind of where... Oh, shit, look at that, yeah. Yeah, this is our Western United States wasteland. And this Zion! is a fallout map. Zion! Joshua Graham, I love you. Sorry, sorry. I Dr. Graham's my favorite character in all Fallout anywhere. And uh, for those who played Fallout New Vegas, you would understand. Okay. Well, I think we all understand favorite characters and how they come to be that. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you guys until Sonny shows up. What do you think is the feeling inside the dead man's cash? What's your theory there? Oh, uh, have, has anybody heard Star Fury's theory? I, I heard Star Fury's theory. It would be hilarious, but I don't think that's it. I hope there's at least some Twinkies. I mean, I don't expect it to just be Twinkies, but Twinkies would hit the spot. <laughs> what is this Twinkie you speak of? Well, not just Twinkie, not just any Twinkie, but I, I think he said it was chocolate-covered Twinkie. Yeah, ding no. Oh, was it? Well, that's not... I guess it's the same thing. I don't know. I think I think it's the same ballpark. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. I know what a Twinkie is, by the way, audience. No, I know, but what if you sliced <laughs> a Twinkie spirally and layered it with chocolate? You'd basically have what... what was it? A ding... What would you say? Ding Dong. Ding Dong, yeah, yeah. Ho-hos and Ding Dongs. Well, do you guys do you guys have any questions for Jack McGuire, the Guildmaster? Because we're kind of going back in time a little bit. So I know last okay. week you guys were curious about the secret files he sent you. So was there anything you wanted to ask him about? I really am once again raise my hand to the gentleman and ask him: Is it only us that are allowed to go into that boat and bring him back? That's the wrong thing. Hang on a second. Uh... Well, we have the IFF. So, yeah, right now, we're the only ones that can shut the defenses down. I think that's the answer to Unless that. Unless there's, there's an Enclave member out to get to the vault himself. But he doesn't have an IFF, so he's tracking us. But he's an Enclave. He, right, right. He could have, had, he could have some type of security clearance. Hmm. hmm. Mr. McGuire. I I am very Mr. humbled Cooper. by your choice to have us on this mission. But are we the only ones allowed to go into the vault for cash? The only way past the defenses 
other than to hack them, and many have tried and all have failed, is by possession of that IFF, the holotape which I have supplied. It is the only way into the Enclave facility. And to my knowledge, you are the only denizens of the Wasteland who are currently in possession of such IFF. My curiosity lies in the fact that we do not know what we could find inside that place. It could be a mountain of gold. It could be nothing but corpses. This means we're most likely, given the situation. Or, my biggest fear, is that nothing but a mountain of mutinous, cannabis, cannibalizing communists, all rotting and festering inside that mountain that want to eat us. We need Mr. something Kurosawa, more than just four of us. Five of us. Allow me to assure you that what you will find in that vault is precisely what my decryption algorithms have discovered. In the, in the mainframe in that vault is the map to the dead man's cache. But if it is, if you are asking me what else you might find, well, that I cannot say. Could it be death itself? Indeed. But that is your affair. Uh, one can only hope. William turns to the other two. Any thoughts, gentlemen? No. No, I needed that refresher, though. If there might be commies there, any endeavor would be worthwhile. Presence of what you refer to as commies or communists is unlikely to be present in an enclave vault, but as I have said, it has been abandoned for many years. We should be prepared for anything. The scourge of communism could be anywhere. Okay, so, uh, hang on. I'm still working on getting Sunny in here. William's okay, going to hold yeah. back on the question regarding his private message because he doesn't know if he wants to bring it up right now to these guys. But out of, out of character, would now be a good time to at least ask about the messages? Per, the ones that he sent us personally? Yeah. Probably not. Although he did say that we can talk about them now. That was uh, their Bowden at one point. Well, I, I assumed it was. Yeah, he said don't tell anybody or something like that. I but... All right. Still, still working on getting Sunny Slaughter in here. She can get in through the screen yard. We're working on it. I, we're working on it. Um. Do, yeah. So. If there's anything that you want to talk amongst yourselves as characters, uh, by all means. So I'm just going to say we're I'm placing you in that occasion where you're in the tavern speaking to Jack McGuire. This message I received, just to be 100% clear, it was you who sent it, correct? Some or an alias. It was I, okay. indeed. All right. Well. I look over to the other two. <laughs> and I uh, say, this evidence that you spoke of, what do I need you to have it? What, what guarantee do you have that it will give me the beneficial outcome that I seek here? I have acquired a vast network of contacts from one coast to the other, and it has taken many, many years to build. If I tell you, Mr. Kurosawa, that I have exonerating, exculpatory evidence on your behalf, you may lay to it that I do. It will be your reward 
or claiming the dead man's cash. You don't really think that I would send you to claim such a vast treasure without some insurance that you would return. And we have well, Sonny Slaughter joining us now. Ahoy, Sonny! Welcome uh, aboard. Hey yo. Now everyone should have two tabs open, uh, StreamYard, and then um, you'll you'll also have Miro open, because I'll be yep. sort of showing us maps and characters and all that stuff. And I did not put Jack's aspects on here, because um, I ran out of time. And also, uh, I you haven't revealed all of his aspects yet. So this this is an important thing. Your characters can reveal aspects if they use their skills, like investigate and stuff like that. So, all right, uh, Sonny, we are we are revisiting the scene in which Jack McGuire, uh, the guild master at Far Harbor, had explained to you your mission. And uh, what he's just, and what we're kind of reviewing is, he had given you all a hollow tape which contains an identify friend foe program, an IFF, which will allow you to enter an old enclave installation and retrieve the map to the dead man's cache. And this bunker is far to the west. And if you recall, at the end of our last episode, all of you stepped onto a tr a essentially a teleporter pad, what's called a molecular relay, and you were transported from Far Harbor to the desert in the western, the old ruins of the western United States. And then, in the middle of the night, uh, floodlights lit up, and uh, you found yourselves confronted by a bunch of armed people, soldiers, uh, demanding that you surrender. And we will continue with that scene shortly. But in the meantime, we're doing a quick little flashback to Jack, the scene with Jack McGuire, in case you had any other questions you wanted to ask him, whether about the personal message he sent you or anything else. So to be clear, your mission is to go into the bunker, get the, retrieve the map, which should then tell you exactly where the treasure is. Okay. Do you remember that message that I sent him back? Uh, let me find it. Was it, did you send that to me directly on Discord? I think you probably I did. Th I, I think I did, and I think it was a little graphic. <laughs> a little I mean, graphic? No, it wasn't. <laughs> I, I, I mean, it was just an actual graphic, not like it was graphic. Oh, okay, okay, I was gonna say. <laughs> I mean. It was a small graphic. <laughs> it was a oh. meme, Jay. You sent a meme, Sonny. That's yeah, what you well, said. But it was for me. Okay. <laughs> That's what you said, ah, oh, yes. And then what did it say underneath? Scorchy's the dog, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, okay, hang on a second. <laughs> I, I make a whole thing and... Bleh. Garrett just pukes on me. Garrett has tried to do a lot of things, okay? I get it. The stream is already, we, we are 28 minutes me. in, and it's already a shit show, so we'll see what happens. Well, but, you know, this is how it goes, folks. If you're playing a, if you're playing a role-playing game, you know, the first 30 minutes are usually getting all the players seated. So, okay, cool. Well, let's, uh, unless you have anything you want to add, because uh, you were like, yeah, let's go. So, yeah, let's go, let's but I want a little bonus treat for my dog. Yeah. That's what it said. So I, I don't understand. Like, am I, is this supposed to be like already hidden? Or I'm not going to bring that up in front of my dudes. Because really I don't right guys that I'm with. No, no, no. You don't, you don't need to bring that up. Do you say oh. treat in, in, in your high voice? Because I got bacon I can share with the dog. <laughs> no, my dog only takes from me. Says, all I can assure you, madam, is that if you recover the dead man's cash, not only will you receive all that I have promised, but your delightful animal friend will benefit mightily as well. You will want for nothing. If that is not motivation enough, then I am beyond my power to motivate you further. Oh, that's plenty motivation. We're all good. All right, cool. I think so. In that case, uh, let's see here. 
Let's go with... All right. Uh, now we're going to go back to... Back to where we left off in the last episode. You were all standing on the teleporter pad, the molecular repay, relay uh, transporter pad. And the Khazar's Legion were bursting down the doors of the observatory, what uh, known as Arc Arcadia. And in the nick of time, a white light flooded over you. You felt sound and light and pain. And then you were met, you were mag almost by as if by magic, transported to a desert in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the night. And then, floodlights. And you have armed men with guns in the darkness pointing them at you. There, there appear to be at least something like five, maybe six at least, possibly more. It's hard to tell because the lights are in your eyes and they are demanding that you surrender. Tres trespassers, identify yourselves and surrender immediately. Drop your weapons or we will fire. One thing I want to bring to your attention real quick uh, is uh, there is one of your party missing. And that would be Wales. Wales did not, he, he either he didn't materialize and he's vapor or he's gone. He, you don't know where he is. So it's just the four of you. <sighs> William. So, visibility is zero except for the lights they have. Uh, you can see silhouettes, but just, it, you know, these are extremely right. bright floodlights that are shining uh, right in your eyes. So that's what's oh, kind I of see. blinding. It's not you. like rifle flashlights. They're floodlights, no. and we've all been, we've all been spotted. Um, yeah. I don't have any like see. special, special eyesight due to being a robot, right? I don't know. Uh, let's take a look at your aspects because that actually might help us here, so... Can I make a perception check with my special? Yeah, in fact, uh, let's do this. I want to establish a turn order really quick. Let's do. Uh, let me go up here. I'm going to go to my handy-dandy note machine. I'm going to log into the GM's Pip-Boy here. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, I want all of you to make a roll on your perception skill. Yes, sir. Here we go. I don't have and give me the final result. That's adding your skill with the roll. All right. One second. Isn't per perception a special? Yes, yep. it's part of your special. This is how we're going to determine turn order. So you roll your special skill here. If it's zero, it's then you roll on a zero. Three. Was that uh, that was William? Yep, three. Yes. Uh, negative one. Ooh. Who said negative one? Uh, Rondo. So, uh, we're all gonna use. Where you, you gotta help me get proficient at this. So everyone is using their character names. Their character names. So okay. I'm going to say Delta was a negative one. So Sunny wants to know, what are we rolling with? So you're going to use your perception skill. So uh, I don't have any perception skill. Yeah. I have luck. Okay. But That's fine. more, okay. what dice are we rolling with? Let, let Four fudge dice. Roll, roll for you. Same dice we used last time. He's going to roll for you. You want me to roll for you? Yes, please. Yeah, there you go. Right. Good job. Okay, you get on. Let me zero. find. Um, she got a zero, Captain. Are you Captain? Yes. No, no on. plus there, no minuses. Just a zero. <laughs> All right, Janie, I'm sending. Uh, Sonny, I'm sending you a link to the dice roller. Just use that. No, okay? that, that thing is a scam, man. I'm not using that again. I got burned by that thing all night last I'm not week. Asking God, don't you be to such a crybaby. I'm not asking you to use it. I'm <laughs> I, saying... assumed that, I assumed I was next, man. <laughs> no, you want me to roll for you, Carl? Yes, please. Okay, I'm rolling his perception. Give me a second. Okay, so... And a negative so, 10. Sonny, you Sorry. asked what you're rolling. This is important. Um, as I want to answer this question. 
any time I ask you to roll on a skill you do not have, it is a zero. Does that make sense to everyone? No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so... so no, you mean you... like I start with a zero or my whole score is yeah, always yeah. a zero? That's it. You start I, with I, a zero. I'm saying, so if your melee skill is a three, you're rolling on a three, right? Because you're going to roll the dice and add three to it. If you are if you don't have the melee skill, then your skill is a zero. You're going to add zero to your dice roll. And you roll zero. Sense? Sense. But I thought we just... Zero. All right. Good enough. Okay. If you're asking um, why do we do it this way, it's because no, it represents no. in the narrative world that your character just isn't their average at that skill. They're like a normie at that. She gets it. Okay, what did I get there? Uh, oh, okay. oh, um, Carl, I'm sorry. You got two negatives to your zero. What? I could have done that on the damn website. I'm sorry. Should, they, hey, get get punch dice and roll about uh, roll of yourself. I intend to. I intend to. And I'm going to get them on camera too. Better. Guys, what are fudge dice? Oh, they are the this game. Yeah, so what? they're the dice that have a plus, a minus, and a and a zero on them. So um, basically, that's what they're called. Carl is the last one to go because he got a minus two, and Sonny got a zero flat. Okay. Sonny got a zero. Okay. So the yeah, turn order is going to be uh, William, Sonny, and then we're going to do Delta, Carl. All right, cool. So there you go. That's your turn order in the game. And then I'm going to keep your scores up there. I'll, I'll just leave it that way because when we actually... No, we're going to keep them up there because I don't want to go through this again. All right, so minus one... <laughs> Minus two, and then we'll keep those scores for when you're up against enemies. Okay. Okay. Now, with that being said, uh, first person with an action here is William. So you are surround. You have weapons pointed at you. What would you like to do? Or, by the way, you can always pass your turn if you want. Uh, William is going to keep his hands down to his hips and not move. And he's going to address the man who spoke to him. Would you be the leader of this here posse, sir? He's uh, he's good. He says, "Yes, I am." It is customary to state your name if a man's pointing a gun at you. Want here is my up? name. I'm gonna fucking drop you, son. You have five seconds to put down your weapon. Now, son, that's gonna be impossible. We're in the desert, <laughs> but if you hold on, hold it, hold that breath. I mean no harm to you or any one of your group. One of my men, and I look back, and I'm expecting to see Whale there, he's gone. Okay, one of my men is missing, apparently. And I don't want to cause no trouble. We are just trying to walk away as far as we can to safety. We need to Your weapons off. will be returned to you after you surrender. And explain to us why you have a synth with you. Uh, I'm just going to... I'm going to declare the aspect, uh, ex you know, extremely distrustful. Extremely hos uh, hot... Distrustful hostiles. Because in this scene, it's clear to all of you, it's obvious to all of you that, like, they do not trust you and they think you're enemies. So, you William, uh, you can roll speech here if you want to see if your words have any any impact. Yes, and sir. I would encourage you to do so. I'm doing but, that right uh, Ooh, okay. I'm going to say it's a difficulty three uh, on I that roll. I got, okay, four. You got a four? Very good. Yeah. I'm going to compel the aspect extremely hostile and distrustful and uh, bring that down to a two. So uh, you should, by the way, everybody should have their fate points. So everyone's refresh determines how many fate points you have. So yeah. Carl, you've got three. Yeah, my my oh, sheet. You don't have my most current sheet, Garrett, and I don't either. Okay. Well, 
just we'll work on that for next just time. Just gloss um, over me. <laughs> yeah, she's got a three uh, three refresh as well. I'm I'm pretty sure. I think Tom said I had higher than that because I had so many luck points. I oh, she wrong. might have a, a larger pool. So whatever her pool is, yeah, you have four. four. Jane, you, uh, Sonny, you have yeah, four. That sounds okay. right. Also, I can I interject right. something here in the middle yes. of his turn? Uh, did you hear Garrett say that we could pass our turn in the future when we're confronted with situations where we need to speak to somebody? I have four charisma. Just a heads uh, up. Are you? You can pass to me. You know what? Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. So, William, you've got three fate points. Delta, you have. Uh, four, three. Uh, your fate points from last... Actually, I will allow... No. Actually, your fate points from last mission don't carry over, because this is a new mission. Mm -hmm. So so you have exactly your refresh to start. So then uh, I should Carl, have four, you... because, I, because I put the two points into luck. Yep. All right. Mr. Producer, kill the music for a second here. Thank you. That's finally, finally, he was yeah, on the it's ball. It's a bit loud, too. Is it? What, did I still have it at 50? It's, yeah. It's, it's a bit loud. Yeah. It's got yeah, I'll, lower it. I'll lower it uh, for future. All right, cool. Now, uh, what was it? So, what was your role there? Um, let's see, we reduced it to a two, yeah. William. So, that, so, what that means is if you want to win this role, you're going to have to invoke. All right. I guess I'm going to invoke. We don't quit. Mm, no, no. Can you, Live each yeah, day by sword, so lead, and the code. I'm invoking that one. Uh, and also, actually, you, I will say that you have, uh, you have an automatic plus one here because of your perk, I believe. Yep. Inspirational. Oh, Everyone okay. gets... Uh, um, okay, so all right, so you when I'm present gets uh one free action point to any speech or barter test. All right, great. Now uh that brings your role to I believe that's adding plus two, plus three. Yep. So I'm gonna say that you have you have bought yourself some time. Uh, because they are willing to hear you out. They're like, if you're if you are not a threat, and you're not with the sense, then who are you? And I better like what I hear. And I'm going to say that uh, you know the next uh, another player can jump in here if they want. Okay. So Sonny, um, Delta, Carl's kind of the, the anybody else the turn order. But uh, uh, if you don't have any, unless you want to interject. Sonny or Car uh, Delta, go ahead, Carl. Oh, it's it's not been my experience that men in control like to relinquish that control. What assurances do we have that you will be returning our weapons and that your intentions are not hostile? We are a peaceful town. We are only out here to defend ourselves. You are you have strayed into a war zone. All right, guys. I I recommend we. We lay down on our, our arms and see what they have to say. Okay. What do the rest of you think about that? Sure. I mean. All right. You dare hey. draw weapons against me? Oh, oh God. You've gone into a rage. <laughs> Welcome to fate. That's always what happens. And you understand their, their, their greatest <laughs> reservations are concerning you. Delta, so check that. Uh, I'm, so, so, I'm sorry. I'm I'm trying to control him. He's he's breaking. He's breaking through. Uh, what the what the hell's wrong with that synth over there? So so no, I'm gonna Carl, say that Carl, this punch, is, punch my eyes. Just punch my eyes. Sir, sir, please, please. He does this sometimes. He gets alarmed. It's it's the people and the guns and the lights. All he, right, he feels threatened. I'm gonna give. Uh, so so. I'm going to say bad, that Carl. someone has one shot here to do something about about Delta. So is there any action anyone wants to take with regard to Delta? 
Because he just um, said, Sonny? punch my eyes. Yeah. What The luckiest person I know. Luckiest person you know picks up a rock and throws it at his head. <laughs> I'm guessing I knocked him unconscious. That's what I'm hoping. Delta? Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say roll your throw skill, Sonny. Oh, and, hell yes. And oh, Delta, boy. I think... Uh, I'm just gonna so say you, you roll like on you roll your defense on a zero oh. because you're you're struggling, so you're not actually using your your actual skill here. That's so roll your defense on a zero. I love the image that I'm like being trying to be reasonable here, not to cause violence. Meanwhile, you guys are just beating the shit out of each other. Behind <laughs> <me>. <laughs> I it really has no I, control. Yeah, I, I mean, like, look. So I don't really understand. Don't be mad. Don't be mad because is this the fudge dice thing again? Yes. Yes. So let, so okay. I'm going to demonstrate this. So actually, let me let me do this. Because, Hang on. Because what? All right. So this is the dice roller I have. Right. This is fudge yes. dice. There are three possible sides to each die: a zero, a plus, and a minus. We only ever roll four. No more. No okay. less. Ever. That's the only thing you got to remember: four dice every time. Okie doke. So here's the deal. I still have a, I'm superb. So I'm a plus five of throwing. Plus I have mm -hmm. the heave ho thing, which, you know, mm -hmm. gives me like a extra, I don't know what, cause I don't understand it, but I mostly now I think trying not to kill him versus making him conscious. So, so what I'm going to say is you're at a, you're at a negative one because you're trying to hold back. So you're deliberately holding back. So you're at a negative one on your roll. So what if we, if, so now we're going to Does that mean that's your... a four total? Nope. Uh, so let me, I'm going to do the roll for you to demonstrate how this okay. works. Okay. Okay. Okay, Sonny, go ahead and roll your, your throw skill at a negative one. So you now roll the dice. Yep. You got, you got a plus, a zero, a minus and a minus that you add those together, you get negative one. So your dice roll is negative one. Now we're going to look at your skill, which is throw. And five. on your sheet, your throw skill is five. Five. A five. Okay. So we're going to add five to negative one. That means your roll is at a four. Plus I said you were at a negative one because of the difficulty. So you're actually at a three. Does Except that make sense? yes, but I have that heap ho thing. Heap -ho, exactly. Yeah. Exactly so right. Doesn't so that now, add more points to that? Yeah. So your perk is heave ho, which says you may spend one AP to extend throw range to two zones instead of one. So that actually gives you distance. It doesn't actually. So it doesn't actually apply. That's here. right. It gives you distance, which will be valuable if you're trying to hit a target that's far away, like with a grenade or or something. Okay. But it could make me hit him twice as hard. No, I mean, it only he's... extends the range. The perk doesn't really work that way. So I'm going to say take the win. All right. Take the win, I'm Sonny. It. I'm taking it. I'm happy. I'm overjoyed. I, except I'm really we, I, I, didn't hear, I didn't hear Delta's roll, though. So uh, what was your roll? Uh, with the defense of zero, it is a one. All right. Wah, so, wah, so, wah. so the final result. So, Dude. so listen. I'm taking the time to explain this okay, slowly and carefully, so that we don't have to keep going over this. So, please let me know if you have any questions. But this is how a roll works, right? So, we're clear on how we roll, right? We roll the dice. the The result is added to the relevant skill, even if that skill is a zero, and that is the final result. Okay, and then we put a negative one on that because you're holding back. So, our final result was a four right because we no, we, we rolled a five minus one minus our final result was a three it's a three mm -hmm. so she okay. beat him by a one so sunny rolled a three is everyone clear on that yes okay cool mm -hmm. uh delta rolled a one okay so and by the way this is how it works in combat as well this is how you fight opponents in combat so three minus one gives us a difference of two that so, in other words, you succeeded by two shifts, Sonny. Is awesome. everyone clear on that? Okay, so you succeeded yeah, by yeah. two shifts. Anytime you succeed by three shifts or more, that is what's called success with style. It means you knocked it out of the park. You hit a grand slam. So anytime you get a three three pluses, that's really good. 
Uh, so anyway, you succeeded by two shifts, so I'm going to say you you nailed him good, and you hear the rock make a satisfying plink off of his helmet, uh, and that causes Rondo... Uh, I'm sorry. That causes Delta to take a mild consequence. Oh, I'm, and I by the way, Delta, I'm granting you a fate point as a self-compel, because you basically compelled yourself on the aspect, don't worry, my combat AI is always under control. So... Oh. So you can compel your trouble to get a fate point? With GM approval, yes, you can. So okay. you can say, hey, GM, I think, uh, my, I, I think my character would be compelled here to do X, Y, or Z. And if the GM agrees, then yes. And so in this case, without even having to be compelled, he did something that is consistent with a compel. He complicated the pro his, his life by doing that. So you have five fate points right now, Delta. Enjoy. Use them wisely, boy. Right. Well, so Delta, Delta, Delta understands what we're, what we're doing, right? So, uh, Delta, in getting hit with the rock, what he wants to try to do, he wants to... We're, we're, trying, to sm we're trying to slap you oh. out of it. Wait a minute. Is yeah. it well, like... let, me, let me just... So, uh, it gives him the, the final control he needs to shut himself down. Is what I'm well, what I was trying to communicate. Okay. Uh, is he incapacitated or is he still yeah, in control? I would no, say he... he's incapacitated because that's what I was trying for. Okay, so what happens was... is you all see Delta just suddenly go <clears throat> and my question is when Delta shuts down, uh does he does he like fall or does he stand there still in place? Hang on, that's what I want why I wanted to know. So I look at the guy that was speaking to us, and then I quickly take a step back catch him, Delta, so he doesn't fall, lay him down, and then step back up to that gentleman and say, you know, uh, again, we're looking for a friend. We're, uh, Wait, hang on. Before you get there, I want I want Delta to answer this question, though. What happens when you shut down? Um, right before shutting down, Del Delta says, finally. And, he, and then he just shuts down. He falls over. Uh, Carl, uh, Delta's pretty heavy. Um, Carl Stoff, man. In in conjunction Don't with his major guts head and his armor, he's probably pretty pretty hefty. Uh huh. Um, so like catching him is gonna be all right. So he hit the ground the like a idea. like a rock, and then I went over to I went back over to the guy and I looked at the rest of us and I uh, put my sword down, put my gun down, took my holster off put my hands up in the air okay and uh what so Sparchy sits up and has this little pause up like he's all free too <laughs> no, trouble. no troubles at all from us the uh you see a figure stepping out of the the floodlights and uh just bear with me one second here um <clears throat> a man steps out of the floodlights and he says my name is Mayor Blackburn. And uh, it's an old, he's a pretty old guy. He's pretty leathery. <clears throat> looks like he's got a lot of years on him. He, he kind of looks like he's just this side of, of death's door. But he seems to be uh, effective, more or less. He steps out of the floodlights uh, to where you can see him. And he says, all right, you bought yourself some time. All, all I know is a few minutes ago, we saw a flash of light. And then here you were. And the only technology we've ever heard of that can make that happen is something from far out east, something the synths use. So you you just have one minute to explain to me what you're doing out here, and if you're not with the synths, then why do you have a synth with you? Now, I'm going to suggest here that if anyone has speech ability, this would be the time to use it. Well, I have, I have to I only have two in speech. Who has higher? Now remember, if you have any anyone with a skill relevant to the skill test can pitch in with a team effort, and you get an automatic plus one on that. What if I started off with my charisma and he then kicked in with his speech? So I've got four charisma. That, should, that functions in this capacity. Yeah, so you, you could roll that. So right. does anyone want to pitch in with this? Did I, did I lie? Is it four or is it three? I'm looking. All right. 
then in that case, I'm going to roll for speech. Give me one second. It's three. It's three. I have four endurance. I lied. All right. So I'm saying it's going to be a difficulty three on this. Oh, yeah. All right. I got... I got a three. Exactly. Wait, okay, I that, thought... that's that's he's rolling for me. So oh, he's oh, no, rolling I'm rolling for you. Myself. I'm rolling for myself. I got a three. Well, I thought I was leading it. Okay, so here's how a team effort works. So you have to one person leads with their skill. Everyone who's participating adds a plus one to right. that roll. So who's lead? Uh, so I would say uh, since we already had we already had one successful persuasion attempt um, from you, William, we're gonna have Carl lead this one. So what was your role, Carl? Good point. It was a three even. Three even. Okay, cool. And uh, we're going to add well, plus hang one on. to that. Uh, my, it was my charisma, which is three. He rolled three, but he didn't know he was rolling for me, so he told you three. What was it with the three, William? Speech. My speech. I'm sorry. Your, di- your dice rolled just now. What was it if you had if I if it was for my three careers? Yeah, he's saying what was on the dice, Stone Crow. On the result that I got, or just my key, my character just the sheet? dice. What was just on the dice? Yeah, what was that? I mean, oh, um, two pluses. I add them to my. Um... Basically, we just okay. Cancel again. that. Cancel that roll, Carl. Roll your dice. Uh, Dis- disregard he's... Storm Crow's roll. Roll your dice. He's rolling for me. He's rolling for me. Okay, roll again. All right, here we go. And we're adding that to your charisma, which is what? All we needed to do was add one more, because I have one more charisma than he has speech. You got a four on your charisma, sir. Nice. All right. Plus yours from William, that's five. So I'm going to say that... uh, I'm going to say that is enough uh, that they will be persuaded so you can tell them who you are. Well, I'm okay, assuming so you're going to tell them the truth. If you're going to tell them the truth, then you succeeded. If you're going to lie intention. to them, that's a more difficult attempt. That's, that's a my more intention. Difficult. And since I was leading it, I guess it's that's my call, right? Ahoy, Anthony Timmons. Welcome aboard. <laughs> hopefully, yeah. hopefully you're enjoying. I'm in. What a truth. I'm Thanks, Anthony. We, we All right, go truth. ahead. Yes, tell the truth. We, let's see, how to summarize. I'm, Janie, you, uh, Sonny, you summarize this. Summarize what? Who are you and why are you out here? And why are you with a sin? Okay. The sin, here's the thing. How many, how much, who am I? Shit. <laughs> Look, I'm just here with my dog. We're not with that thing. I mean, I threw a rock at it. I knocked him out. I'm just trying to move forward. We don't want any trouble. We just want to pass right by. Right, Carl? Carl? Did we William lose? Gonna, did we lose Fu Man uh, Blue? William's going to interject with that and say, the synth may not be there? with us at the moment, but he is valuable for me in terms of in terms of monetary value. So if anything else, he's basically my property. Yeah, sir. Like I was saying, okay. the synth and that guy, <laughs> Carl and I, we don't know anything about them. We're just kind of on our own. We just want to be left alone. All we right. don't want to cause any trouble. All right, here's here's the deal. We were hired to find a vault and we were transported here through some sort of technology with which i have no familiarity uh we're not here to cause trouble we're trying to move through we lost a friend uh any help you guys could give us would be appreciated but uh that's the gist of it oh i see what's going on says the old man you're try you're more of those idiots that are trying to break into that old enclave vault, aren't you? 
Well, we were told that there had been people before us, but uh, I don't know. We were under the impression they were stupid people, but apparently <laughs> they, they weren't smart enough to get through. I don't know about stupid, says the old man. He says, but I do know that uh, I don't need to kill you because that vault will do it sure as I've been, sure as I breathe. Plus, the sense from Old Trail Bridge would never have stumbled into an ambush as stupidly as you five, so... Or four, I should say. So I suppose you ain't a threat, but you better keep that synth of yours under control. We don't like his kind too much. Fair enough. Sure. I understand. Uh, I promise you. Again, he's not I our normal you. traveling companion, but we've been firm together in this situation. We're just trying to make the best of it. Now, William, did, uh, were you trying to say something as well? William steps up to the old man and says, Sir, I swear on my family and my honor as a man and a samurai of these wastelands, that sense over there will not cause you any harm. I swear it. I'm going to hold that to you, young man, says the older guy. William bows slightly down. All right, now... Uh, Captain needs to make a note here. What did I, <laughs> what did I say this character's <laughs> name was? Uh, just, here. What's that? Yeah, we've just been calling him the mayor. That's right. He is mayor, Black mayor. Blackburn. Oh, Blackburn. 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 Yeah. That's it. All right. And we're gonna sit. Yeah, Mayor Blackburn. All right. So. Uh, Mayor, Mayor Blackburn says, well, you folks had better uh, come with us back to town. We are from a nearby settlement. We don't have much. Uh, but over there in Laffin, we have mostly decent, clean water and a place for you to rest your head. And if you insist upon going to your deaths at that vault, well, by all means. But if you're going out there, it could just be that you might be able to help us folk out. So if you are willing to uh, help us with a little bit of trouble, then you will have our hospitality. Does that sound fair to you? That does sound fair, and I will. I would ask that you give us whatever knowledge you have about the path between here and there after we've completed whatever it is you need of us. Well then, I think we best uh, discuss this back at the town. All right. Carl's so, uh, going to pick his gun back up and his sword. I, I love that. Of course, she looks at the rock, but doesn't pick it up. William goes back to Delta and basically piggybacks him back into town. Uh, All right. Like, I think it's it would be like a team effort. Like, No, to... I'm going to roll for it. I'm going to roll for it. All right. You don't need to roll for it. You guys are good. In fact, uh, well, actually, because I am going to probably have you roll for something here in a second, because you're going to be traveling back to uh, to the town. So uh, let me show you where you're going. You travel. You're gonna. Tra it's going to take you several hours to get there. And by the time uh, you arrive at Laffin. It's uh, it's the early morning, and so you see the uh, the sun rising over the horizon of the desert, and it's very clear that you are not in the Commonwealth anymore. And I will say that you, William, because of your lore expertise, you oh wait no, I, we decided you knew the law, but I will just say that um, you know, uh, survival. William and Carl, having both spent time in the NCR you're kind of familiar with this area and you recognize that you're somewhere in either Northern Arizona or Southern Nevada is kind of what it looks like. Also known as the Mojave Wasteland. Wait, William, so, can I ahead. like self invoke my trouble real quick? If I realize I'm in the NCR and I say, Who, I who's start typing? I hear loud typing. Someone. Hey. Yeah. 
What? Can I hear loud say, typing? Can I say a ranger dame? Well, you can't on my hear. Hill. So if if you're typing, uh, just mute it while you're typing if you can. Or forget it. We'll just roll with it. It's probably not that distracting. All right, go ahead, William. Sorry. What were you saying? <laughs> hey, Sonny, mute your mic. I had my mic off, man. It couldn't have been me. Can you hear me now? Oh, yeah. What the fuck? How can you hear me now? <laughs> what do you mean? I hear you now. We've been hearing you the whole time. No, but I... never mind. Okay, Garrett. It's Basically, so I'm not. I'm not trying to spend the fake point here. But if I realize I'm in NCR territory, can I be like, oh, no, she has to be here somewhere, you know? Oh, if you're referring to Ranger Thompson. Well, it's possible. Uh, but, you know, it, it's a big desert out there. The, the chances that, you know, you'd have to be in the Fallout TV show for her to bump into you this quickly. Ooh, that's <laughs> fired. <laughs> No, no. If you were in a Jonathan Nolan TV show, uh, yeah, she would just randomly bump right into you right now. All and right, then you'd then get I... separated and you'd stumble onto her again later, totally also randomly in the middle of nowhere, just at the right time to save her life. Five times. Okay, then with that poor knowledge in mind, I'm going to walk up to Carl real quick. And uh, since he is really the only friendly one in the entire interaction back there, and I'm gonna with Ron with Delta still on my back, by the way. I'm gonna say thank you for the help. You're that welcome. could turn very ugly. It was my I'm no, pleasure. I'm no stranger to violence, sir, but I prefer not to spend my bullets on unnecessary bodies, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I'm not not a fan of the, the murder. Well, let me just then recollect you on this. We have the possible, the possible, very slim chance, rice grain chance of being an acquaintance of mine out here in uh, what I assume to be the NCR territories. She's, she's a bit of a complicated soul. We have a complicated history. So if you do encounter this woman, don't engage in a fight. Just let me handle her. I swear it'll benefit us all okay. in the long run if we make her a friend. I can't make any promises, but I'll do what I can. That's all I can ask you to do, sir. I don't think I can roll with that. I think, yeah. Girls like me. Yeah. I bet she doesn't really like me. I bet I hope she does like you. I really do. Don't need no bloodshed here. <laughs> okay, okay, so now I would like everyone to roll on their endurance special, their endurance special attribute. And if it's a zero, roll on a zero. And uh, we're going to be going, you're going to be traveling for about five hours in the hot desert sun. And so. I'm going to say that it's a difficulty two and just roll. To let me know what you got. I got a four. Okay, so uh, that would be William there. You're doing pretty good. What else we got? Scorchy, shut Scorchy, up. Scorchy, that's Scorchy. <laughs> uh, Carl, you want me to roll for you, man? Yeah. All right, just give me the dice roll. I've got a four right. endurance. You can, yeah, that. Yeah, give me the the real thing. Ooh, all right. You got six, actually. Okay. Thank you. Of course, Sonny. You want me to roll for you too? So you're rolling your endurance to see how well you're handling the elements. I'm going to roll for her. Do you want me to roll for you, Sonny? Yeah, go ahead and roll for her. You got one. Uh, yeah, so the, okay. 
She's my rolling on a zero. Is... No, I, was, I'm, I switched that. I'm rolling on a two. A two? Okay, yeah. so you just barely succeeded. So I'm just going to yeah. say uh, you, you have the temporary aspect a little parched. It's okay. If she if she falls down, her dog just grabs her by the ponytails and drags her. So we don't have to carry her. If I'm then- thirsty, <laughs> if I'm thirsty, my dog will drool in my mouth. Oh, oh geez. that's adorable! <laughs> oh my God, what the <laughs> hell? Scorchy Correct. loves me. This is a family <laughs> show. What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know, I don't right. know how to respond to that. And like, I'm I'm speaking out of character. It makes like, me as a person, I don't. Look, you don't want me to take this down the Bear Grylls route, okay? Let's just oh, no. leave it like we have it. Be happy. Hey, all right, all so... veterans of the Badlands, we know. <laughs> uh, so, um, Captain Garrett. Yes. Um, so, does Delta wake up during the five-hour journey, or...? That's a great question. I'm going to have you uh, roll your no. roll your endurance and let me know the result. Okay. We should have had the option to wake him up. He shouldn't be carrying him. That's not even realistic. If I couldn't break his fall, there's no way Numb Nuts is carrying him. Yep. Yeah, uh, he's unconscious. I'm he's going unconscious. Going I mean, William Kurosawa. I mean, William Wait, Kur- you can do whatever, okay? William. That was an Damn. epic throw, as always. That guy's out, man. He's out for the count. That wasn't the goal. To be. Yeah, I, I hope I mentioned this, Delta, but you have a minor consequence, which is... Um, the consequence is Servo uh, actually uh, could... Oh, I know what the consequence is. What is it? He's subservient to me because I overpowered him. No, that's an extreme consequence. <laughs> You're confused. No, what I'm going to say is... Uh, I thought I'd try. There's no harm in trying. I would say be so da- fucking pissed. Damaged uh, neural... <laughs> damaged neural module. Or I'm going to say a fluctuating, a fluctuating neuromodule. All right. What? So that, and that is as part of your consequences of your compel. So, all right, cool. Now, uh, allow, uh, what was your role, Delta? Uh, grand total of two. Okay. I'm going to say you you're, you wake up, but you're feeling pretty groggy, and uh, you're, it's taking you time to uh, catch up to things but you are aware of being packed around on William's back. William, what was your role? What was your role on the endurance check? I just realized something. I got a four. Okay. You're going to reduce that by by three because you're carrying Delta, How which long is taking carry- it out of you. Uh, so I'm going to say that you're actually, you're actually uh, thirsty and hungry. Hmm. I got one clean water and one cooked meat. Can I take a bite of each, essentially, to keep me going? Yeah. So, so I'll let you clear that then. Yeah. So, you, so remove those from your inventory. Yes, sir. So you just consume some food and water. All right. Cool. You travel for a while, and uh, eventually you reach the place marked on your map. And uh, I can now. Based, based on what the mayor shared with you, I can now kind of show you where you're at. And I don't know why my map moved. Why did my map move? It should be down there. I'll probably go with a different... I'll probably go with this map in the future. But yeah, basically, here's where you are. Uh, he explained to you that you're a little bit south of Hoover Dam. You're basically in this area right here. And uh, specifically, your target... Uh, you arrived like right about um, here, and this is actually where you're going to need to go, which is the enclave, the old enclave vault. And then right here is where you're headed, a town called Laffin, and it's on the Colorado River. As you're arriving, uh, you see the ruins of what looks like a a bunch of casinos from the old world. Uh, you see a bunch of towers, all pretty much damaged. It looked like uh, it looked like it must have once been a vast city. There is a sign that says uh, it basically says L A U G H, and then there's like a, a letter rubbed out, and then it says I N. So laughing. Um, and it I looks like it. like it used to be a place that people went to have fun 
on the Colorado River and uh, do a little gambling, but now it's all ruins. But there is a little piece of it that's fenced off with a bunch of junk fences um, and a few buildings that are mostly standing after the bombs. And it appears to be a, a makeshift, pretty dirty, rough-looking settlement. And I'll show you a picture of it now. Uh, so this is the town, and, uh, you know, the, there's a river bordering it, but this is basically the town that you're walking into. And you see a lot of a lot of hard-looking glares, a lot of uh, tired people, and you definitely get the stink eye uh, because of Delta. But a few soldiers at the gate, uh, as you're passing through, say, uh, The mayor radioed ahead, said you'd be coming with that thing. Uh, you're approved to go over to the to the laughing inn. To the laugh inn. Ha. Huh. And uh, you can hole up there. I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't be going out with him too much. We're having some trouble with the sense over at Old Trails. Like I told the mayor, sir, this man, this thing, um, he's my companion, my servant, actually. And he goes wherever I go. If he acts up, does anything unwarranted to any of you, I will handle it. I swore an oath. That'll be good. And, and on you go. Right about that time, uh, you hear a very, a very peppy, excited voice of a young woman yell out, Oh my gosh, you must be the strangers that I heard about. She comes running up to you and uh, she, she says, don't worry, I can show you around. Oh my gosh, it's been so long since we had any visitors. Uh, and uh, I'll show you who you encounter. So it should basically uh, looks like she's uh, around late 20s. And she has, uh, you know, red hair. What's she looks name? pretty scrawny. I'll show you. Hang on. Uh, and that would be... Uh, this character here. <laughs> Wait, why can't I see it? Why are we? You, uh, what? What's? Why are we laughing? What's uh, you? Uh, you sure you you don't want to make that an O in that name, sir? Just complete the parody and all that. I I, I don't know what it. you're driving at. It's Harry Potter uh, for fuck's sakes. Oh, yeah, it's not Harry. It's not Harry Potter. I, oh, I can't. Right. You know what? The Miro thing is in front of the name. Yeah, I can't. I, I, can't see I know. It. I was. I was about to have her introduce herself. She says, "My name is Penny Putter," and uh, she's like, "Welcome, welcome to Laughin." Well, hi, uh, Penny. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to she, meet you, Penny. William uh, gets she, a bow to her. Not salutations, to maggot. Oh. <laughs> Oh my God! Uh, yeah. You Sorry see, you don't, see, Sunny pinch the bridge of her nose and go, Penny. We can't always choose our traveling companions, but we can choose our new friends. And I offer her a lipstick. She says, "Wow, you are so nice and so well, pretty, and you're pretty too. So, you think you could help us out a little bit?" Yeah, tell us what's going on around here. Oh, yes. please do. So I come with me to the end. There's a lot to tell you. Sure, let's go. So uh, uh, you, she takes you You don't over need to, to look at her like that. I didn't. Carl, I, wasn't. I mean, I wasn't. it's a little bit much. Come you know? on. Really? I know really you've been in the desert, but... Really? <laughs> we just got here. We just got here. Can you... Okay. To the tower. So she... She takes you to the tavern, and uh, I'm going to show you kind of more of the town as you're traveling through. So, yeah, she takes you to kind of a hole in the wall. As you can see, it's not a lot going on, but uh, basically what used to be an old repair garage, which serves as the tavern. And uh, I think I had, uh, I think I had something for this. Let's see here. Mm -hmm. it smells like a shop. What? Greasy rags, oil stains. Here we go. Giddy yeah, litter. 
Okay, so uh, you you settle down into into at a table, and she brings uh, she offers to bring you some drinks, and so we'll we'll say that quenches your quenches your thirst from the desert. Sweet, I uh, think alcoholic. And she says, "You seem so positive, Sunny." I am. The world's a great place. You just I have to make so it great. Too. Do world, you? It might be broken. But the world's what we make it, she says. Exactly. So you guys actually know uh, her high concept, which is uh, the world. You actually have that revealed, which is kind of the world is what we make it. So she says, I just am so tired of the war. War with I can't, who? With, well, him. She looks over at Delta. You're really a synth? It's complicated, <laughs> but technically. Why is your head so big? Oh, well, um, you see, I was actually inv invented in, in the lab by Dr. Mon Monty Irons. Um, um, uh, can, I, can I interrupt him? I, is there a way to cover his mouth with my hand? Or I my don't body? Have a mouth. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say there's not. You could you try to cover his mouth. Could but I like the sound throw my is... jacket Carl. over his entire head? Carl Hanson. Oh, wait, stone. I only am wearing a bra, <laughs> so I don't know if I have a jacket. Uh, Carl, I a can I borrow your jacket so I can cover him here, here, up? I, I, no, but you like can have like a like rock. a bird in a cage. All right, so rock. so Delta, they're they're trying to cover your mouth. Uh, Please, are you... Stop! 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 It's fine. She just asked a question. Okay. Oh my god. I kick you it's... in the shin because it's not freaking fine. Yeah. Don't you well, understand? I'm not like other synths. Uh, yeah, short you answer. are. You're the short answer. Synth. Guys, look, there's no need to fight, says Penny. She's like, I, listen, I'm not like the other people in this town. She kind of looks both ways and you see there's some kind of stink eyes coming from a couple of wastelanders at the bar. And she's like, I don't hate synths. I'm not a bigot against the synth against uh those of our of our brethren who are unfortunately synthetically created it's not their oh, God. okay okay you know what i don't feel good about this at all uh can i roll can i roll, roll for what to see if she could be a gen 3 synth Oh. Uh, yeah, you could attempt to detect that. So I would uh, let me think about what what skill because I would say perception, but yeah, you have an investigate or I I have lore institute. Oh, okay. Actually, that's good. That's good. Yeah, because hang on a second. Uh... Could science help with that as a backup? Or Possibly, but but yeah. I'm gonna say it's it's cool. How's the music volume? Is that good for everyone? It's much better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's good. Cool. Let me know if it's if it gets out of whack. Uh, so you have lore the institute, which definitely could help you here. Otherwise, science would probably be good. Uh, but actually, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say normally I would say science, but because you are from the institute and you're very familiar with uh, kind of their inner workings. I'm going to say that this actually, if you roll Institute, this is going to be an, an extremely easy test. It's a one, basically. Okay. So you can roll on a one to attempt to dis to, to ferret out whether she's a sin. Okay. God damn it. Oh, my God. Fuck. What'd you get? You got a negative, didn't you? I got a negative three. Oh, a <laughs> negative three, huh? Uh, uh, duh, so she's total, not a total sin. Total is negative two. Okay, so, so what I'm gonna say is, uh, here's what happened. Uh, you were you, your your eyeball. Unless you want to spend a fate point, I'm gonna say that uh, I'm gonna narrate what happened. You got okay. five, man. Just use one. It's up to you. <laughs> Just remember, <laughs> when you're in battle, <laughs> you and make sure. I'm, I'm not saying. Believe me, I'm not discouraging you from using fate points, but they are valuable. Uh, no, I'm not going to use it. I'm going to take. I'm okay. going to. Uh, I'm not going to use a fate point. Okay, so here's what happened. Uh, you were you were just 
one of your little eyeballs was zooming in, like zooming in to get a good look at her, and you queued up your software, which is absolutely excellent at detecting synth uh, silica pathways. Uh, so you would have immediately detected, and right then, your faulty little your faulty servo from when you got a rock thrown at your head uh, glitched out, and literally you just shut down for a second. You went. Zzz. That works. And I she says, "Winning." Is he <laughs> what? What just happened? Uh, says Penny. And so now I will give someone else an opportunity to investigate this if you want. Uh, do I, can I? Do I immediately I, turn back on, or am I now off? For for off. the rest of this turn, you're off. I'll I'll bring you back in That's in a second. Fair. Okay. All right, so I'm Garrett. giving initiative to the next player now. So, so we now know that the girl's not a synth, correct? No, uh, you don't know anything because know. He, he shut down in the middle of his sentence. Garrett, so what uh, I'm, I'm saying gonna... is, it's the next person, next player's turn who wants to jump in here. William? Garrett, can I use the perception uh, on my special to see if I notice anything weird about the girl? I haven't said anything. Yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna say you. Uh, yeah, you can roll perception. All I'm right. gonna say it's a difficulty. Difficulty. You're you're just saying just to notice anything about her. Yeah, like the same reason that. Yeah, just to see if she's off essentially. Yeah, difficulty one. Go ahead and roll. Ooh, five. You roll a five. So that is success with style. So I'm going to grant you uh, two fa two action points to your Woo. pool. So let me put those in there. Yeah, so you have two action points. And I'm going to say that, like, one look at her was all you needed. Uh, she is no threat to anyone. She is. She wears her heart on her sleeve. Uh, her high concept, we can't go home again, but we can make the way to home, has been revealed to you. And then... Uh, let's see here. Uh, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that you actually uncovered her trouble. Oh, uh, that normal thing in most people. Yeah, Kazar broke that because you you suddenly notice that she has a she has a brand just barely showing above her shirt collar on her neck, and it is the distinctive symbol of C Kazar's legion. And so you oh. immediately realize that she is an ex Kazar Legion slave. What do you make oh. of that, William? Uh, I, now remember, I really... you guys, you, you you haven't let your companions in on this yet, so they don't necessarily see what you see. I'm saying this is what this is what okay. William sees. Uh, William gets immediately like softer, right, because he's been paying attention to what she's saying, and he goes, uh, he takes his hat off actually. And says, Miss Potter, please tell me immediately if I'm overstepping my boundaries here. Or how long have you been free from the clutches of those miscreants? Oh, you mean since I was a slave? Uh, let's see now. I think it was like <laughs> six years ago. That and... that was when, uh, yeah, they've been fighting the, they were fighting the new California types for years over that damn dam. And uh, after a while, I think uh, it changed hands a couple of times. And actually, here is where I will I will actually ask the players if you want to involve yourselves in this. And I will ask the chat. Uh, who won in the events of Fallout New Vegas? Was it the NCR, Kazar's Legion, Mr. House, or the Courier? Or the Courier mm -hmm. took over New Vegas? And if you don't know what any of that means, Janie, uh, that's because you didn't play the game. So if you want to have an opinion, you're welcome. Otherwise, you don't need to. I will sit in for Tom's opinion. I bet you could figure out what Tom would say, and that's what I'll say. I honestly have no um, idea what Tom would say. Oh, for F sakes, Garrett, come on. <laughs> I can't speak for Tom. He's not. Uh, that would be Wales. He's not here. Uh, chat, if anyone in the chat uh, would like to enter their opinion, who won in the events of New Vegas? Was that the... NCR, Kazar's Legion, Mr. House, or the Courier took over everything. Oh, God. I'm torn between saying the Courier or Mr. House. 
I'm going to flip what do a coin. You say? What do you say, Rondo? Uh, oh, uh, I put, Delta. Uh, I put mine in the in the chat, but um. Okay, you think uh, I'm gonna, NCR? I, I'm going to I'm going to say N, NCR. Carl, what do you think? Um, what are the choices again? Did the New California Republic win? Did Kazar's Legion win? This is in the events of Fallout New Vegas. Or did Mr. House maintain, you know, control of New Vegas? and Kazar's sort of... Legion. I couldn't remember the name. I'm yeah. going for the Courier winning. Yep. All right. Um, my coin landed on heads, so the Courier won. That's two Couriers. Are you in or not? All right. Uh, and I don't see anything in the chat. So I'm going to cast... I'm going to say uh, very well. I, I agree. The Courier... Took over New Vegas, and uh, what that means for you in the game is that Penny explains, uh, yeah, they were fighting over all that for a long time, and I just heard a lot about it back at camp. And then uh, one day, uh, you know, they both got kicked out of New Vegas, and uh, ever since that that uh, that strange, I, I don't know what he was, like a mailman or something, he, uh, he took over the New Vegas and kicked out Mr. House. So ever since then, I've been free. Kazar's Legion fell on hard times. I heard they went looking for greener pastures, but uh, so that's how I got here. You also notice that uh, you, you know, in this tavern, there's all kinds of mounted and stuffed, uh, like mutant creature heads, like rad roaches, and uh, you know, uh, what were the mole rats and just all kinds of ugly, disgusting, mutated creatures are like stuffed and mounted all over oh, like, the walls. Like rad, rad stag? Yeah, like rad stag, mm. rad roaches. Mm. And uh, she says, "I." by the way, I made all of those. She points up at the <laughs> all of the okay. stuffed creatures. Okay. Oh my god, they're gorgeous. Yeah. I know, right? You... Now, don't worry. I didn't kill any of them. They're all they were already dead. Well, of course you didn't. How much are they? Well, I don't. Would you, would you sell me one? Oh, no. I didn't mean to insult you. I just think they're so beautiful. I would love to have one. Well, I can't sell them to you because I gave them to the tavern keep. But uh, you know, oh, I could make you one. But, have you ever made one out of the synth skin? <laughs> That's. F I don't understand what you mean. <laughs> that, that's that's very mean. <laughs> now just, listen. Oh, no, no, no. I, d I just meant, you know, obviously if the animal's already dead, you'd have to patch what it What the fuck did something. Delta ever do to you? Poor Delta. He's just, he's... At that exact moment, Delta wakes up and finishes his sentence. Oh, fuck. Here we go. And, and successfully <laughs> identifies uh, that she is not a synth. So, Delta, you just, oh, you just figured out she's not a synth. And right. you're not aware that you passed out. So, uh, uh, she, she. Oh, you're you're not a synth. Oh, I thought. Wait. Well, of course I'm not a synth, silly. So, what is it you wanted to talk to us about? Let's just cut to the chase. Well, the mayor's going to be here any minute now, and I know what he's going to ask you. He's going to ask you to help us take care of those synths uh, at Old Trails Bridge. You see, our town's been at war with them. They showed up a couple a uh, couple years back after the Institute or some such. I guess they hit uh, some, some trouble back east, and uh, a lot of the synths that used to live there came out here to try and live free. Problem is, there's been some misunderstandings over the years, and nobody even remembers how the feud started, but... The mayor thinks, and the rest of the people in Laffin think that the synths want to kill us all. And the mayor, uh, he, th they seem to think that the mayor wants to kill all of them. And I just want the killing to stop. I just want people to be happy again. And I think you five could, you four could do that. Uh, William's going to... Penny? Flirt. How do you mean you think all of us five could do that? What... There are only four of us, but the... uh, that was a GM error. Disregard. <laughs> disregard. I, yes, I appreciate your role play no, wait, there, but because uh, Sunny's uh, Scorchy's there, so yeah, is that five? 
<coughs> All right. There you go. Cap to roll out. There you go. So, how do you think we could fix it? She's like, well, I have an idea. The mayor, when he comes to you, he's going to ask you to beat up on those scents. Uh, but when he does, just uh, make sure to take the third option. And uh, she she leaves she leaves a little hollow tape for you and uh, scurries away right as the the mayor is coming in with his William. retinue of guards. I, uh, Delta slaps his hand down. Wait a minute! Tape. Can I can I roll to make her not be able to leave that fast? No, I want to. No, I, I, I'm gonna say that uh, she she's scurrying away because the mayor is showing up, and she's like, just just it's on the tape, just 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 play along with whatever he asks you. William grabs the grabs the thing. He grabs the tape. Wait, I I also reach for it. All right, roll your both of you. Roll your mm, roll your agility? agility. Yeah. All right. Uh. Whoever hey, gets Car- the higher number. Hey, hey, Carl, are we going to hop in here and help whoever could play the fucking tape? Because can't the Sins you- play it, but nobody else can? No, you can uh, all play really it on your play. Pip-Boy. The Pip-Boy allows you to play a holotape. Okay. So we all have a Pip-Boy? Yes, yeah. we all have Pip-Boys. All right. Uh, Never mind. <laughs> I, got okay. me, I got me a three over my one in agility. You, you So you got a three? Yep. Carl, what'd you get? Or, uh, oh, sorry, Delta. Um, I got a one in total. Okay. All right. So, uh, William got it and he snatched it just before you could grab it and, uh, loaded it up. And, uh, as it's loading, the mayor comes in and he's like, well, I see that, uh, Penny got you all settled. I hope she didn't fill your head full of a bunch of nonsense because there's a lot to get into. He sits down and he explains pretty much what Penny already explained, except he casts it as uh, it was it was the sense fault that all the trouble started. They moved into town, and uh, there was, you know, they they did some some shady, some questionable deals. There were disagreements on uh, some deals that they made. Uh, misunderstandings happened. Things got out of hand. A bar fight or two, and a synth wound up. Uh, you know, stripped for parts and destroyed. And apparently the sins consider that murder. And so the mayor says, now I tried to smooth things over, but them sins, they don't trust us and they want us killed. And here's the deal. Uh, If you want to get into that enclave base, you're going to have to go through the Securitrons. So he explains that uh, Surrounding the the base, the Enclave base, is a bunch of Securitron robots. And uh, actually, let me grab a picture of those for you. But he says that they will shoot to kill anything that uh, shows up at that base. So Securitron... Okay. Um, Yeah, here we go. I got it. Uh, Copy. I'm going to put it right here. That should work. As the mayor was saying all that... Boy, and he began to read that. Still listening to the mayor, but he began to read whatever was on the hall tape. Yeah, so we'll get to that in just a second. But essentially, this is uh, this is a Securitron. It's basically an automated robot uh, that's designed to just shoot to kill anything that shows up. So, so the mayor says, "Now I calculate that the whole reason you're here is because you've got some way to get past those Securitrons. Am I right?" And uh, you all are pretty much aware that, yes, the IFF should allow you to get into that base. It says, now the problem is that the synths want to take control of the Securitrons. We want to destroy them because we want to get into that base and get the loot that is rightfully ours. They believe that those Securitrons have a mind and rights and all such nonsense when clearly they're nothing more than you know, rolling turrets. They ain't got no brains, they ain't got no sense. So they're not alive, but the sense think they're alive. But if the sense are ever able to reprogram them Securitrons, they'll kill us all. So we can't allow it. But we also can't get close enough to destroy them because the sense are always protecting them. But you four, I'm willing to bet you could get in there. 
once you're in the base, I have a simple request. Just reprogram those Securitrons to take out the synths, and uh, you keep whatever it is you want inside, and whatever is left that you can't carry goes to us, the townsfolk. Well, what do you say? Um. Yeah. Garrett? Yes? Quick question. Yes? Is the stuff that we're trying to recover for them the stuff that we're, we're, try we're trying to recover for us? All you want is the map that's contained on a computer somewhere in that facility. That's all you care about. You don't oh, actually... Oh, then we're good to go. Yeah, yeah. you don't... Th there may be some loot in there for you to... He's saying whatever you can carry is yours. He's okay. just saying, like, all I want you to do is reprogram the robots to, to attack the sense. And if you do that, then we're aces, because then we'll have an army. He, he, as he explains, when we have those Securitrons on our side, the sins don't stand a chance, and this war will be over. Okay, so I look at my team. <laughs> Does anybody have those reprogramming skills? I'm fairly fluent in in binary. I can I could probably do it. Do you I'll, have I'll... the skill set and dice roll ability to do it? I have the skill set, not maybe not the dice roll. You have science level three, which is pretty good. And I've and repaired I... and I've repaired level three and engineering one. So hmm, I have luck six. That I could do it by mistake. So I think we're okay. Yeah, let's go. Garrett, uh, you know what? I would wait. Now, we do know who's going to be a problem here. Penny, yes. No, mm -hmm. our own synth probably is not real keen on the idea of this. Yeah, well, I want to get some clarity. You... What was okay? One about... of someone was trying to jump in there for a second. Uh, it's one I at want a time. to make perception, a perception roll on the mayor to see if he has anything hidden behind his words. Okay, hold that thought, William. All right, and then what were you saying, Carl? Uh, what was he saying about having feelings or whatever these synths were different? What's, what's going what on? It, what he was saying was the synths, which are, you know, they're like human robots. They're like androids. Those are, they're over there in, uh, let me show you the map because he, he points it out okay. on the map so you can see it. Um, Okay. Well, I was just wondering if there's, if when, I mean, we can address this later, I guess. But no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain it. So you're no, I mean, here. Do we necessarily want to go in guns a blazing with the intent on killing them and doing as they asked, or can we go in there and try to work something else out with, before turning the security system loose on them? Well, I'll let you guys Wait. talk through that in a second. Okay. But okay. Let me just answer the question, um, so that we're all clear, right, of what he's saying. So you're here in Laffin, um, and then. The synth town is over here on Old Trails Bridge, and they they are fighting over control of the vault that you guys came to break into. And uh, so what he's saying is the vault is protected by these automated robots called Securitrons. And the mayor's opinion is that they are they're just like wa they're like washing machines. They don't have any intelligence. However, the synths think that they have rights because they like, you know, they're also synthetic beings is what the sense are arguing. They're saying these Securitrons, uh, they're not just, you know, they, they have rights. And so what the sense want to do is reprogram them to have free will. Uh, but the mayor is saying what they what that's going to do is give them an army they can destroy laughing with. So what the mayor is saying is I'm asking you to reprogram them to work for, for us so that we can use them to destroy the sense. That's what he's asking you to do. Okay, well at the very least we know we can shut them down and then maybe reprogram them. All right. And uh, I will now- you know, you, you, cool, right? Can I just ask one quick question? Yes. So when we talk about the vault, it's protected by these, and they're, these are like, for a lay girl. <laughs> uh, they're powerful. Low, le low level. No, so your your IFF your IFF should allow you to disarm them and get okay, past them. No, no, no. I, but I'm asking you, like, compared to uh, Delta, right? Delta's yeah. our synth. Yes. These are kind of like I don't know, baby robots, right? They're not like 
they don't have all the components that Delta has. Hold that thought on my roll real quick. I would say you could ask Delta that. Delta could tell, like, okay, you Delta, could ask Delta what's the difference. What's the difference, Delta? Well, Delta, Delta turns to Mr. Blackburn. Could you physically describe these synths for me? He says, well, they look pretty much like you, except with the weird bobblehead. Uh, they walk on two legs, two arms. They, most of them, some of them even have human flesh. They look human. You wouldn't even know they were synths. And they walk, talk Did just you, like any of us. So are some of them, do some of them look identical to human or do uh, some of them look just more like machine, sim, like uh, metal simulacrums of people or? He describes a mixture. He says some of them have rubber skin and yellow eyes like these right here. Uh, and he says others look like humans with flesh, blood, sweat, the whole thing. You can't even tell the difference. Okay. All right. Hmm. So um, Delta turn, turns to Sunny and, and says it, they seem to be mix, a mixture of a couple diff, different models. Um, unfortunately, these can these models can actually be pretty pretty sophisticated. I mean, I myself am a unique case. I'm somewhere between these these versions. Okay. So, well, gosh, uh, <laughs> where are you going with this, <laughs> Garrett? I I want to know if they have a particular logo on them, and and where would I post a logo that I wanted to know? Okay, well, I want to I want to kind of give everyone a fair shake here. So, um, go go ahead, William. What what is it you want to do? I want to make a perception check on the mayor to see if he's being truthful with everything he's saying. He's not leaving anything out. Uh, yeah, I'll say that's a difficulty too. Ooh, try with a four. All right, so I'm going to say that uh, your impression of him is that he's shooting straight. He believes the synths are the enemies. He wants them destroyed. And he thinks you are the ace in the hole that can do that. He believes that they are the enemy. Yes, you, your gut feeling is that he's he believes they are an existential threat to his town. He believes what he's saying, William. And uh, it was, who was it that had the holotape? It was you, William, right? From Pam? Yeah. Okay, what does so, it say? And so the, the tape says, and this is for Will, this is what William saw when he loaded it up. Uh, you saw that Penny sent a, a short message. It just basically said, you can reprogram the Securitrons to keep the peace. And so basically, her, she's suggesting that you simply reprogram the Securitrons to favor neither side and use it to force them to the to the bargaining table. So they'll just talk to each other, the sense and the t and the people of Laffin. Well, that's right. stupid. <laughs> what the, of course, our resident psychopath hates that idea. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, look, look. If you can reprogram once, you can reprogram twice, or three times, or four times, or five times. They're a not threat. If you do. Not if you don't not have the you. IFF, and we're the only ones that do. Yeah. yeah, that's your advantage. You you have the Thank IFF you. supplied by the Guildmaster. No, um, I'm asking. I'm asking you as the DM. Does the IFF work for both? the synths and for the Securitrons, or is it only going to work for the Securitrons? So you're, it only works for the Securitrons. Securitrons. Okay. It's, it's yeah, okay. Mechanic. I just want that clarification. Because they, they are part of the, the facility's defenses, so right. that's why the IFF works for you. Okay. All right. Look. William keeps quiet with all the information he just learned, because he'd rather talk with this without anyone but the group at the moment. And all he's going to say to the mayor is, sir, do we have a deadline to meet this mission? Well, I suppose that's up to you, but uh, 
the sooner the better, because I don't think you're going to be very popular in this town hanging around uh, with a bucket of bolts like him. And he nods toward Delta. Sir, that bucket of bolts is my problem to deal with. He won't be a problem for the town. And that said, if you want this mission done expediently, I suggest you give us any provision, weapons, or armor you can to expand. I'm not asking you to sell your leg here. At any price you find agreeable to our needs. But sorry, what was that you said? He wants money and equipment. Yeah. He wants to okay, yeah, I just stuff. couldn't hear. Okay, um, he would say, look, I don't, I've already told you, whatever you can find in, in that vault is yours. But we ain't got much around here. I'll give you some basic supplies and set you on your way. But I'm going to tell you right now, I've done you a real solid, Sonny. A lot of folks around this town believe that you are since wolves in sheep clothing. But... This, uh, this man over here convinced me. He looks at you, Carl, and says, uh, and I'm going out on a limb here. I got a good feeling about you folks, and I can hold them at bay, but, you know, don't go pushing your luck is all I can tell you. I understand. Hi. All right, so, so the mayor says, all right, well, uh, I'll have the barkeep set you up, and so you all have, uh, you all have a couple of pure waters, and you, uh, the, the party has a one stim pack and uh, okay. you also have uh, a good a, a full belly a full belly uh, so you're taken care of on, t- on in terms of food and water for a day can I However, he's gonna he's gonna leave you guys there at this point um, and so it's up to you guys to kind of strategize about what you want to do and talk talk over that what was your question Where? William? Can I take the moment while we were doing all that to purify the five liters of water that I had? I had dirty water, and I want to see if I can pur- purify them now. That's going to take you a couple hours, so you can do that later. But right now, we're still in the scene where you're at the tavern. You can leave if you want and go do that, but uh, you probably want to discuss with the group. Yep. So remember, you don't know what he saw in the hollow tape. so now that, that you've been left alone, uh, you guys can talk amongst yourselves. I'm going to let okay. these guys talk first. See what they think. Yeah, you could send us the video or whatever. No, no, I want to hear what I want I want to see hear you guys discuss it first. Yeah, well, why would I discuss anything in front of you if you don't show me the tape? Either we're a team or we're not a team. Show me the tape or don't. Let me know right now. All right. All right, yeah, calm your too. calm your pepper there, Garland. I show you all the tape. It's not Pepper. I got, I'm a psychopath. <laughs> I hear there's medication oh. for that. Uh, you'd be incorrect, sir. Sure. I show I show them the tape. I show everybody here the tape. And what's on the tape? Okay, so just to re- recap, it's a message from Penny that says, you know, don't reprogram the Securitrons to kill Synths. Reprogram the Securitrons to be neutral. And then we can get both sides to come to the table and negotiate a piece. Okay, that's retarded. That's what I say to Does, does neutral Carl. mean they won't attack anybody? No. Well, then so she's right. Only the, yeah, it means they'll calm they're, down they're for a short period of time. Yeah, they, yeah. They, won't, they, won't, they won't attack either side. For how long? Well, you guys can program to do to pretty much do whatever, but they'd basically be your Securitrons. So she's saying oh program question. them to work for you and then use them to get them to come to the table. Yeah, what if okay. we use... See, here's the thing. what yeah. if we just reprogram them and use them for our own end and bring them with us as our private security Well, force? no, they're part of the base security. Who it's gives a like shit? A turret, for if example. we can, we can't if up, we uproot a turret and carry it along, who's going to drag it? They bunch have of legs. The they have they, wheel or legs or whatever. Didn't they we can't just move on their own. They can, can, so, but can they? Okay. Can they the move? Are, are basically metal men, right. except with the wheel instead right, of. You guys talk it over. Guys, I'll be right. I'll be right back. Okay. You guys right, talk. These guys. These guys are going to have proximity limiters that aren't going to let them go beyond a certain perimeter. Yeah, we don't we know that re- yet. First of all, if yeah, we can reprogram them, we can reprogram that. 
You can't break just, the game. That would break the game. So we, let's assume that they're not going to be something but, we can take with us. You and know here's what? my concern. Don't, don't, yeah. don't like just cough that up so fast. Well, I'm trying to uh, avoid wasting a bunch of time on nonsensical bullshit. You don't... So, what kind of luck do you have? You have no luck? The question... Or something else like eh, that? Eh, we're going to have this army of fucking laser shooting badasses following us around? That's not going to break uh, the game? Anyway. Yeah, it's not going to break the, the game. the thing Sunny pointed out earlier, but I, I was under the impression that we would leave it the way we found it, but apparently that's not the case. So what Sunny said earlier is a concern. In other words, if we leave there and we leave that security system neutral and somebody decides to go and make it to where it only kills sense or it only kills the sense go in and then make it only kill humans, then it's right back where it was. So we got to do something to ensure that it goes back to hating everybody afterwards or hating nobody. But no, you can't. We'd have to destroy it. If we made it hate nobody, that the only way we could do that without fear of somebody turning it against somebody else is to destroy it. I say we take it for ourselves. I take it. Yes, we can. That's, okay. Okay. I'm Car telling Car Dad, and Car Dad is going to fuck you up. <laughs> Dad, Dad has it considered okay. this might be the option. <laughs> and Dad William. might get all revved up once he All right, you know what? Guys, William pulls out his gun and shoots him in the air. No, he don't doesn't. don't you fucking don't, do that. Don't waste ammo. Don't be an idiot. You That's guys are stupid. being rambunctious. And Ron, no. Delta. Rambunctious. You wanted to say something? Okay, okay, like, out of character, I'm talking to you, Fu, Fu Blue. you're probably right, but in, uh -huh. but in game, it wouldn't be the craziest idea to say that we could reprogram them as our personal bodyguard. It, now, it makes sense. Now, returning, now, speaking as Delta, look, there are chances, yeah. Look, so it seems that our best option would either just to be to destroy the entire the system altogether or to have them have them attack attack the sense no william cuts that out i'm not crazy about just killing the sense william cuts that out immediately and says from what i've been gathering this mayor is under is operating under a belief that's the key word here a belief that the sins deserve to die we have been presented with an opportunity to force both sides to sit the fuck down and really talk out their differences. Exactly. That's what but I dude, think. do you know where we are right now? These the people wasteland, talk out their differences. Yeah, the wasteland. I'm gonna hop they don't make friends. Time. It's die or be dead. Why? Who says that it has to be that way? Me. And I'm right. And are you? Oh, and what are? And who are you exactly? She's You're a woman with team. common sense, is what she is. I have both common sense and boobs. <laughs> oh, <laughs> she, you said she she literally said that. Yeah, yeah. she literally yeah. said and, that. So does and the dog and uh, Scorchy went because Scorchy knows. And so, and so here's here's what I throw down to you guys: we go in and reprogram them to be our bodyguards, or I'm not coming with. Best of luck. Here's Here's a compromise there, Miss Slaughter. We sit them all at the table, then we take the well, secure trunk with us to the cachet. That way we have a better chance. And that way cachet? we don't have to kill nobody. Yeah. What I are you talking what okay, wait a minute. Am I talking to the same guy who's like, Well, you can give me a cap and I'll just go kill someone? Is this that same guy? Excuse me. I would say probably uh William Kurosawa does have a, a particular high concept here, which is... Yeah, I'm not into that high concept. Where is it? Where is it? Uh, there it is. Yes. Uh, live each day... He, he's actually not typically motivated by money, in, in your observation, Sonny. Live each day by swords, lead, and the coat of the Duke. And uh, the coat of the Duke, in his mind, is a is a, is the old Western frontier hero's coat. So. Well, that misconception that Sonny has is based on a direct quote from William Kurosawa last session. Which was? I which which was, was, was oh, who's that over there? You want me to kill him for a bounty? Sure, I'll do it. Something to that. When did effect. he say that? He said, when give me a cap and I'll kill him. Back, Absolutely. Him. No. No, kill him. no, dude, go back and look at the video. So that's where she got the idea. I'm not going to debate whether or not it happened. 
Well, that's fair. Oh, well, here, okay. here's what I would say. Uh, well, actually, uh, right about that time, as you guys have been talking this over, uh, Penny Penny Putter comes uh, over to the table, and she's like, oh, thank God he's gone. She's like, listen, uh, I've been kind of eavesdropping a little bit, and maybe I can help, guys. Oh. Yeah? Well, it seems to me that you all are working together, so the sen the sensible thing to do is to do it the NCR way and put it to a vote. All right. I don't think thanks, I don't think any of us want Penny. Uh, just but... in, in summary. Oh, sorry. You 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 think she only caught like the last little bit? She she kind of saw you guys from across the room, so you don't think she heard much of what you said, but she Penny, probably heard a little bit. Uh... Penny, I I appreciate. It, but we're not a democracy, and also we're adults. We she's we an adult too. She's she's like in her twenties, but she does she is a bit childish because uh, she's lived a sheltered life. But anyway, go ahead. Look, we're we're professional. We're professionals at this. We will handle it. But thank you. Hold on now. Excellent response. William like, stands up and says. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna kill no sins. I'm not killing innocents, and I don't want nobody to die. We have been presented with an option to save both parties and to take something valuable with us. For the sake of practicality, I think my idea is best. Scorchy growls and lunges at you. I grab Scorchy's collar. Yeah, I don't. This may be where our partnership ends right here, right now. All right, let's, uh, so, so here's my question for the group. So you guys have, so you guys have a difference of opinion and, uh, I was out for a minute or two. So just catch me up on like what everyone's feelings on this are. My, I'm going to see for myself real quick. So With I, the well, I, that I yeah. William, you're saying you want to make them your army and you want to, you want to go with Penny's plan. So I think I got that. So like, where are you on this Delta? Well, let's um, back up. Let's back up. Hang on, Delta. Um, no, that's well, no, no, Del I, no, 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 don't inter don't let Delta answer. I want uh, uh, GM has asked GM has asked Delta a question. Go ahead, previous Delta. Previous per person didn't. Okay, previous person just did. I, I'm coming to you next, uh, Carl. It's not for me. You need to go back to the previous player. Yeah, you missed. I'm not trying to be a jerk. Technically speaking, Crow didn't know the question. There's two questions here. What do we do with security and do we kill sense or not? And that's what they're fighting about, whether or not we're going to kill sense, not what we're going to do with the security. So you need to ask Crow again. No, I'm just saying catch me up on when I was gone, What, what, where you guys are at. So. All right. Well, start with William. Well, that was, I guess that's the gist of it is we have start two conundrums. Can we... Uh, can we enslave the security robots and make them our bodyguards? Well, Garrett is not going to tell us that. We have to find that out on our own. I've already told you that. Yes, the answer is unequivocally, without any doubt in your minds whatsoever, yes, you can program them to do whatever because that's exactly what all parties are asking you to do. Ta-da! They're, the saying, they're the saying, when you go in there and your IFF shuts them down, just do us a little favor and program them to do what we want. And so if logic dictates that if you can do that, you could program them to do what you want. Okay. See? Now, could you the... use them as an army for in perpetuity? That's another matter. Well, not perpetuity, but at least for the short term. And then William's take on the sense is to let them live, whereas Sonny's is not. But but we can go from there. Sorry. So, so where do you stand on that, Carl? Are you for... Uh... What, what, do, what do you think they should do? I don't think it's right to kill the sense, and I am down with uh, enslaving the security to go with us once we leave, if we can. What about you, Delta? At first, Delta's kind of okay. Del Delta's kind of okay with killing the sense. That seems out. That seems out of character, but he's had a past with the institute. That's interesting. Thank you, William. All right, so that kind of gets me to where I'm at. Now, uh, I'm going to get a little bit meta here just temporarily mm -hmm. and but, for the uh, uninitiated. Also, I, would like, 
I would like to say Delta will be more willing to go with what the group's decision is, ultimately. Yeah. So meta means I'm stepping outside the game just to talk kind of at a high level. So what I'm saying is, at, as a GM, uh, if you have a reason to go off on your own temporarily, you can absolutely do that, and we'll resolve that, uh, you know, it, as we discussed in the first session. The way we resolved it with William when he went off to help Far Harbor um, if it's like a, if you're saying like this is a permanent party breakup, that is a bit game breaking. Uh, I'm willing to entertain that, and we can we can kind of work through that. I'm going to say what that would actually probably result in is a contest between players, and so we could resolve it that way. Um, my suggestion as a GM would be that the players kind of take it, put it to a vote. But that being said, these are your characters, so. Role play them how you feel they need to go. But uh, I'm going to now return the scene back to the players now that everyone kind of knows where we're at with this. And so, yeah, who wants to... Go ahead, players. All right. Well, so... It's decision time. Well, You're... I mean, I'm not as experienced as other people, so... Well, I guess going, it going off to, going off how my character operates. I mean, the bottom line is, can you cooperate? Can I cooperate? Is that who you're asking to? Yes, Sunny. I don't need to. So you're gonna split off? You said that's the well, a deal breaker. I didn't. I didn't you're say that because things. because oh, you, you know. Said, I thought you said the sense die or you're out of the party. Think of it no. this way. You know what? No, That's not exactly. The I want the Securitrons enslaved. Oh, so you don't care if the Synths live? No, no, I have no interest oh, in cool. the Synths. But no, 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 no. I'm not in any hurry to preserve them either. No, but I'm just saying, once we get control of the Securitrons, you're not going to turn yours loose on the Synths, are you? I don't know. Well, wouldn't, hey, they be my own? wouldn't they be my own though yeah they they would but the Carl? synths are separate and the synths are something else they're people robot whatever they're not androids. people they're not people. okay fine i'm not going to debate that but do you want to plan to kill them as soon as we liberate the security systems <laughs> as soon as we turn the security systems over to protect us would i nuke the rest of them sure yes would you nuke but they're not the same thing as the security you know i i understand that okay well, you keep lumping them together. I think you're. I think you might have a, a bias against uh, synthetic life. Perhaps. Uh, I'm going to say that under the aspect uh, "live by the code of the Duke," it occurs to William that uh, you could, you could go visit Old Trail Bridge and talk to the synths uh, if you want to investigate for yourself whether the, yep. they deserve to die. Uh, I'm saying you could propose that's an idea that you have that you might consider suggesting to you the know, group. See, like, this is where I don't... Because, uh, well, you know what? I'm just going to lay something out there, and my first idea would be to wait a couple hours until it was dark. We kind of make our choice, whatever. And then I might just pop someone. But I sense that that's a game breaker, so I don't want to yeah. go in that direction. <laughs> so, you say that but I, as a character, that's Ooh. what my character would want to do, because we're here what for I would us. Argue. We're here to move forward, and if anybody is going to not move towards the same goal as the team, we're all in they're really though. no. We that are really on. actually not in agreement because as Where? soon as you let the synths. As soon as we take those security forces away, they're going to be in a full-out war. And who wins? Not that we don't give a shit because we don't care, but She's we're still point. stuck with that. They're still so we don't each other want that. Gone. But you know that's what? Why, that's, that's why, why I say not. kill them because who cares? They're not humans. They're only partially that's, whatever they are. You, you they're not real. Running in circles. And that's why William's on my time. He's... Well, you know what I'm saying. Keep, you keep running in circles about slaughtering people when there ain't no necessity for it. Did you not? Dude, you would be the first one I'd pop. 
because you're okay, the one who make won't sure that to okay story. let's pause for a second make sure that you're separating when you're speaking to the gm like like aside from the scene and when you're in character speaking oh okay that, cuz that's right. important like if you cuz well if you go say like i'm going to pop you well are you saying that as a character in the scene or are you saying you know aside to the gm so just try and both? keep that separate no, it's not both. It's one or the okay. other. It's one or the other, right. always. No, no. Okay, first of all, I was asking you that, except only theoretically, because I so, would never okay, then let kill me somebody answer. in the game. That's retarded. Let me help you out. So let me help you out, Sonny. Be right. Uh, you have several aspects that already cover right. this, right? Which is, look out for number one, try not to step in number two, which means you're in this for yourself. Why are you in this? To get the dead man's cash so you'll be yeah. richer than your wildest dreams, and also so you can get the answer to the mystery. If I should die before I wake, I pray the mysterious stranger my soul to take, which indicates that you also have an offer from Maguire that's going to help you solve that mystery. So your character has strong reasons to put aside your desire to knife your companions in the in their sleep and just get the dead man's cash. So, so Unless, Garrett, you believe, yeah. as I do, yeah. that letting the sins live is going to impede my path to success, which I believe. Well, if you break with the party, then you're you're pretty much on your own, which would be dangerous for you. So no, I don't know that I'm all on my own because so William has so no me. problem killing the. You could go full PvP, which just means we're going to no. have to resolve this. <laughs> you probably have to. Someone will have to build a new no, character. No, no, no. Look, look, look. it's it's. Why is why is the person who wants everything to be yeah. sunshine and light? Sunny. Why is that okay? Sunny. Sunny. Why? Why is the dark side not okay? What if I'm not what saying either is okay. I'm saying what the party does. You're, there's a difference between I, the party has voted this and I'm going along with it, and the party oh, has voted had, a, this and I'm going to kill someone. That's the, that's what I'm had, debating. We've had we've had no vote. But what if you just reserve judgment until we get a chance to communicate with them. Maybe they turn out to be murderous thugs that will never stop trying to kill these humans. And if that's the case, we just cut loose on them. This all may be a moot point. But if you go into a situation where you're not prepared to kill everybody and you're already making a moral stand on people who have no moral legs to stand on, you're already... Miss Lauder. All right. I'm always prepared to kill every mission. Shorting your own option. I'm always prepared to do that, but I don't want to do that. That's not my first option. This isn't. This shouldn't be the first option we should take. We can go talk to the synths, and if they are logical and more reasonable, that means we have a better chance of getting both these parties at the table to talk out a peace treaty, and we won't have to worry about them anymore. Then we Listen can take the secure trust with us. Listen to the man. All right. Uh, Sonny, anything to add there? Just let's go up and see what's up. All right. So, we'll so William, talk to him. Sonny, are you still on? Did we lose her? Oh, uh, yep. Oh man, she's so pissed off that she lost. Right in the heat of the moment. No, I think she probably just got kicked. Because well, what I was going to say is, uh, if we're deadlocked, then we're going to have a contest. Uh, so, I, so it's basically going to be a player versus player contest. Is how we'll, we'll resolve that. In I fate. say we just sneak away while she's gone, and then when she comes back, we'll already be there with the army. <laughs> uh, so we we cut. <laughs> I don't want to just like. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to like uh, mm. undermine her ability to respond to that. Um, no. but we I know you're right there. So, uh, okay. let's see. We'll hold down the fort. Ah, uh, let's see what. I... Well, in that case, then what I what I'm going to narrate happens is uh, that you guys have talked it over. It's been a very contentious debate, but uh, now it's time to to kind of just like rest and uh regroup now the question for the group is when when do you want to head out to the outpost 
I, I would say since the group is still deadlocked, you're basically you're basically all gonna like stay the night at this okay. inn. And then I will say if if any players have other plans, then you can enact those plans. So kind of where we've left it is where we've left it. So you all go to bed or you all uh, go to your separate areas of the inn for the night. Okay. And uh, the group is still very much uh, discombobulated and unhappy about their discussion. So well, actually, I think I'll start with uh, with William. Uh, what do you what is your character's inclination here as he's brooding in the inn? William he's thinking real long and hard about the situation he's in and the fact that one of his companions is very clearly clearly just begging him to invoke the code on her but he knows he needs everyone he needs to get to the cash so he's going to actually after he takes a drink He's actually going to look for a penny. Okay. And uh, so, so you go looking for penny, and then uh, we'll, we'll return, circle back to that in just a second. But uh, Delta, kind of your character's thoughts on what he's going to do. Um, Delta's kind kind of conflicted because um, he just. He's not a fan of the of the institute. Oh, so he. But just to he be clear, really these might... synths are not part of the institute. They they are free synths. The institute has been destroyed, so they're kind of like more like refugees from the institute than anything. But they're still rem they're still remnants, and they could still have programming. True. They, for all you know, they could be trying to rebuild the institute. So that's true. So. Um, so that's like Del Delta's mind mind about it, and um, he knows the past of the Institute. So um, he he kind of he's kind of leaning towards maybe it's just best that they're just not here anymore. Major Major Guts is just you know he's always interested for a fight, so he would he could blow them up and and he'd be totally fine with that but um delta delta right now is is just we just got to keep keep moving forward and he's trying to I, figure out he's already trying to figure out a way of reprogramming the the securitrons because he's probably going to reprogram it for um he he's calculated that he's going to be the one front running the reprogramming. He's going to definitely make try to make sure that they're on our side. Okay, so Actually, he's going to spend his evening kind of working on a plan for that. Also, um, does Delta does Delta know that his servo is malfunctioning? Yes, he does. Okay, is there any way that I can repair that? Yes, you can roll uh, repair. To uh to to actually work on mending your mild consequence. Okay. So yeah. So what I'm gonna do is actually let's work on that right now. So I'm gonna say that you you roll a, your repair skill on the difficulty of your consequence, which uh is since you've had some time to rest, I'm gonna say is just a two. So okay. go ahead and roll repair on a difficulty two. Okay. Um, I also have a rare junk and a valuable junk. Could either of those help me in this role? Yeah, uh, yes, I would say that uh, if you if you convert the rare junk, um, it you automatically succeed. Uh, you're, you'll you'll immediately eliminate the mild consequence. If you use the common junk, you can add plus one, or the valuable junk, you can add plus one to your roll. Garrett, I uh, actually I wanted to say before I go look for Sunny, I mean for Penny, I want to quickly talk to Carl. Okay. okay. See if he wanted to tag uh, along with me. 
That's I'll good just... because I'm going to ask Carl first. Uh, what what's your care? So we'll we'll come back to you, Delta. What's your character's thoughts on what he wants to do this evening? On what Delta wants to do, or what William wants to do? No, Carl. Uh, what does Carl want to do? Oh, I. You've want gone to back help. to your room, and you know you guys have all right. been kind of arguing over this. So kind of what's where is he at? Well, he's pretty much in agreement with the other two. Uh, it's Sunny that's really given us the trouble. So yeah, I'm I'm gonna go and uh, talk to William and get a sense of what he wants to do because we could do something through the night if it's within. A, an appropriate distance. Yeah. So here's what I'm going to do for Sunny because I want to be fair to her as a player because she, I, her internet might be out or something. So we. Are lost you not her. talking to her? Because here's what's going on. Her, her screen got captured. It looked like somebody had her screen moving her mouse around. She had no control. Her security shut her computer oh. down because it picked up the hack or whatever was going on. What? Oh. I, I just assumed she was back on talking to me on Discord that she would had told you at this point. Um, she says she's uh, shared her screen enough to know that that's what was going on. The mouse was not mo or was moving when she wasn't touching it. Secure security alert shut down the computer. Yeah, that's the that's the gist of what, what happened. That that is very strange. So I don't know what she plans to do. But yeah, we should be able to get her back in here if we want to pick that up back down in the tavern or however. Well, I, I know that you can see someone else's mouse moving in Miro, so you should you should be able to see that. Yeah, so. if you're if you're following someone, then you can then you I basically think she knows about that. She wasn't unless she was looking. She lost control of her computer and it shut down because it had a security alert. It wasn't because of Maro or whatever that's called. Her computer detected a hack and it shut it down. So I mean, okay. So she's out of the she game. She had no control. All right. We'll we'll come, she's, then. She's out of the game. So what I'm doing is giving her a fate point, and I'm saying her character was compelled, under, um, okay. you know, basically mild sociopathy. Or sure, I've been called a sociopath, and so she stormed off because she doesn't like where this is going. So I'm going to say that her character is out of the scene, and we'll resolve what happens later. Okay. All right. So, so you guys are free to. So, Carl, were you gonna uh, link up with? Yes, I'm uh, gonna go find William. Okay. All right, William. So you and Carl can resolve your conversation. Uh, basically, what can we? How far is this place that we have to go? Uh, out of character here, but. No, that's just. Uh, you, that that's a valid question because it was already explained to you earlier. So I would say you're uh, you're about a five hour walk oh. away. Uh, hmm. Well, a lot of what I was thinking hinges on her continuing to be disagreeable, and if she's not going to do that, if she's going to be cooperative, then we don't necessarily need to try to sneak off or anything. But I do want to try to parlay with these people. And that's another thing, the the positioning. I mean, how close are we going to be able to get? Are we going to be able to get close enough to activate the IFF without alerting them to our presence? Or is alerting them to our presence going to be uh, Well, you mandatory? can't be certain. All you know is what McGuire mm -hmm. told you, which is that the IFF will work. And then we know what Penny told us or what Blackburn told us that they will, they're killing humans on site, basically. That's what yeah. they claim. So I'm really good at sneaking. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how that could help us. It's just I don't think anybody should get too close to that place. I mean, we need some Carl, I wanna, Carl, I want I want your honest opinion on all this. I'm I'm gonna lay my cards on the table. The idea of letting people die over mis over a wrong belief on crime is very repugnant to me. I want to solve the situation where both parties come to the sitting table and come out of this without spilling blood of each other. The secure drone thing, that I'm just, I can take them or leave them, but I can understand the military value of having an army like that in our backs. Honestly, the more I think about it, 
the less comfortable I am taking them as personal bodyguards because I don't necessarily trust her. She's liable to do anything. And the more can, power she has, the more danger she has or is potentially to us. By the way, can I just say I, I love I love the uh, distrust in the wasteland. It makes me very happy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's sir. the opposite of uh, yeah. Lucy there, right? Yeah, I hadn't, con you know, and the funny thing, I hadn't considered that. She until is. <laughs> she would have eaten Lucy for breakfast. She oh, oh. Her. <laughs> also, oh, wait, no, well, except her. Lucy has like impenetrable plot armor, uh, so you know that that's a problem. Okay, if she didn't have that, Lucy would not stand a minute against us. <laughs> also, no. William now just thought about this. If we we need to still find whales. You don't know where the man is. That's true. You've heard nothing from him. Not not a peep. And his and man, uh, his pip boy transponder is not returning a signal, so you don't know where he is. Was it before we took the teleport? It was, right? After uh, we, after we what do you mean? Teleport. Was was what we before? knew we knew where he was before we were teleported. Yeah, you were all standing on the teleporter pad, and you all, and then you all teleported, and all you know is he didn't show up. He didn't rematerialize with you, Carl. Yes, I think, I think it's best that we. I don't want to say this, but I think Penny had the right idea. We have to. We have to. The group has to come to a decision. And at the very least, I know I got your vote on this. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not comfortable with taking down people that I call my companions, even though she is disagreeable and frankly unladylike. She is still part of our group. At this juncture, we're already tearing each other's throats out. That's not going to work out if we need to get to the dead man's catch. I'm not saying to trust her. But I'm saying that at the very least, keep her at a distance. Well, not too much where she becomes the drama queen. Yeah, I don't I'm think not, that's gonna be a problem. We need we need to we need to take the we need to Will William like like puts his hand on his head because he's really not good at this this politicking. He's more comfortable with seeing a bad guy and taking him down. But this situation, it's really more gray that he's comfortable with. Yeah, well, well that, that's a good point, Delta. You can hear uh, you can hear them kind of talking in hushed tones in the next room. So, uh, if you want to join the scene, you have the opportunity. Um, Delta's going to use one, his rare junk in order to in order to fix himself. Okay. Um, and then he's going to go over. All he's right, going to so... go over and join and join the conversation. All right. So you've used up your rare junk and your mild consequence is healed. So you've repaired the fluctuating neural module and you are good to go. So um, one thing I will say is uh, you have the aspect um, a great conversation and tea is what's best in life. So that, that definitely would be a reason for you to go butt in. Okay. Am and, I uh, can I compel myself and get a refresh point or no? Um, I will say uh, it doesn't really add a complication. Um, uh, okay. I'll think about it. Uh, but what I will say is... William, you are feeling like, uh, how was it you put it? Uh, that this situation is way too gray. He's not comfortable with gray, black and white. But this this whole situation with Sonny and with the town and the synths, and it, it's just, it's messing him up a little bit. Yeah. Hang on one second. Uh, talk among talk amongst yourselves for a second. So yeah, I was comfortable with the idea of having them as our body bodyguards until she, you know, until I asked her if she was just going to turn them on the sense. 
I mean, I kind of was half kidding, but it turns out she's just as crazy as she says she is. So I don't know about that now. Hell, Delta. How are you feeling this evening? Uh, Delta, Delta walks walks into the into the room. I've uh, Delta. I overheard your conversation. I know there that was quite a that was that was a lot back there. I'm sorry you had to see that, Delta. But when it comes to matters of these magnitudes, heated emotions become flared up. Look. Usually, usually, I understand where both of you are coming from, wanting to solve this in a diplomatic matter. But coming from the the institute, dealing with sense, and having not the brightest past with them, it's it's very difficult. I, I could, I could single handedly. Put them all to rest and and not have and uh, sleep soundly, as you as you humans call it. But well, De Delta, you see William get actually a bit more. What's the right word? Like, mm, like whiter, and he's like, Delta, I understand. I'm not going to intrude on your past. That is not my business yet, sir. But to deprive, to deprive people that were born into this world by whatever means necessary, the chance to, the chance of freedom, freedom of, of thought and will, just for the precaution of safety, that is just wrong. I'm not good of a wordsmith, well, but I think we're getting ahead of, ahead of ourselves because we don't know what the situation is going to be when we get there. It may be that they give us no choice, and in which case we do what we have to do. Exactly. Because also we're losing sleep over it tonight, Carl. I I think I could I could speak with you and saying and saying ultimately we don't have enough information. Exactly. And the. Yeah. The ultimate best approach would be to find out more. Right. I Cursory. could, I could, in theory, go to go to them, and since I am mostly synth, that's what I, I could. I could potentially try to find a diplomatic. Because it's only a five-hour walk, and you could run through the night. That's what I my agree. initial thought was, but we just did that, so I wasn't going to like, you know, go with that first. But well, I just it's fixed totally the, an option. I just fixed up my neuro sir yeah, servo, so I should probably I be that. pretty good. I should probably right. be pretty good. You know, and that was, yeah, that was one of the reasons why I didn't think it would be a good idea, because you were broken at the time I had the idea. Um, hey, real quick, hey, Rondo, you were saying... You, you were saying that uh, when you click on someone's mouse cursor in uh, Miro, it, like, follows? Yeah, so if you click on someone's icon like i can click on captain garrett then i can follow you wherever you go on miro and it just does that automatically yeah at the bottom of the screen it's a, it says a uh, following captain garrett so wherever whatever you do in miro i see okay yeah i think that's maybe what happened to sunny and she just you know, thought it was something else going on. So anyway, I'm door. just trying to work out if she's going to come back or not. And so has the party arrived at a decision? So I, I like uh, Delta. What you're basically saying is. Uh, so what, what you're saying is that you want to go secretly to the sense and talk to them. So, yeah, so Delta's proposing that basically because he doesn't need to sleep and because he's a, he's a synth, he could he he probably has the best option to uh, he probably has the best option to try to find a diplomatic uh, solution 
to to this conundrum and if not find a diplomatic solution at least under come to an understanding of where the sense lie in terms of practical in terms yeah. of like their morality cultural practical intentions practice. either yeah if they're going to cooperate you'll know because they'll let you talk to them uh, if they shoot on site you turn around come back get us and we proceed accordingly with a plan of attack not just a plan to attack <laughs> so probably uh your best bet is to at least go with him most of the way and then let him go ahead. I Because if he makes the whole journey tonight in the dead of night, he'll be alone. That could be risky. Yeah, there's no reason we can't camp halfway. And, and that way, when we do decide to go and take action, we don't have a half a day's journey ahead of us. Uh, William is going to pike up, pike up and then say, I volunteer to go with you, Delta. Yeah, we'll, we'll both be going with him. I'm not sure about Sonny. Mm. It's kind of a yeah, I, development. If we... It's, I wouldn't go further, further than halfway, though. That's I'm what being, I'm saying. I'm being dead, dead serious, Carl. Both... If both of you were moved any closer, you, you would all be at risk. So, I like this plan. I like it a lot. Uh, I've been speaking to to Major. He doesn't usually like subterfuge and espionage, but he understands its effectiveness in war. So I've been able to convince him enough to go along with it. Okay. Um, now, the last matter is Sunny. I would suggest maybe leaving her here. I, mm, I'm going to put a caveat on that, sir, and say, we leave her here alone, and she could possibly have the whole town right, yeah. ready to go down. Because All right, I'll she, stay back. Yeah, because, you can't leave her here. All right. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, so you're saying you can, you're going to leave her here, or you can't? We can't. Uh, Carl will stay here, yeah, and then... William's going to go halfway with Rondo and then we'll meet up. Okay. Um, I like that plan. Um, William's going to... We can, we can yep. track each other, right, with our pit boys? Yep. Yeah. Yes, you right. can, but be aware there are times that there could be interference, such as radiation and, and uh, things like that. Also, if you get behind a mountain range or something, so there are things that can interfere... But uh, generally, you're in open country. You more or less should be all right. Yeah, we shouldn't have any trouble. Yeah. Okay, so. Okay. I'm going back to my room. Uh, right, before so Carl leaves, William, yes. William motions for him to say, before we leave, I need you to do me a favor. I know I it's, that, but... I'm, I'm sorry, but Penny Potter has gone through a lot. She's, she used to be a slave. I don't want anything bad to happen to her. And if you see Slaughter or the mayor anywhere near that girl, let me know immediately. I don't trust any of them with that little girl. Okay? okay. She's 20, but I understand. Yeah, 27. 27? Yes. Damn, yeah, I thought she was 14. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's not a minor. She just has. Not, she's twenty-seven. I brought, the, but uh, the character is. Uh, she's a little bit. She grew up at sheltered. She had like very little contact. With but she was a Kaiser's Legion slave for six years. I feel like that would. No, that was six years ago. She she grew up a, a slave to Kaiser. Oh, how is she still so innocent? Unless, what makes you think she's innocent? Oh, you'll just have to get to know her more. Keep an eye on her, Carl. Keep an eye on her. All right, I Kurosawa. Will. Let's get moving. All right. All right. So you guys head out into the desert, and let me uh, let me find appropriate scenery for you. 
curls. Uh, so Sunny might sleep, come back. back in. She might not. I'm not sure. For now, we're just gonna. Uh, she she's out of the party temporarily, and we'll we'll see if uh, we can get her back in. So. So it is late at night, and uh, you're going to begin your journey across the desert. And it's going to be about a six-hour trek. And I'm just going to say, you know, if you guys want to try and use any, create an advantage, such as using stealth or something like that, um, you can you can take a swing at that. I got, can I use a survival roll to see um, where's, like, the best spot to avoid danger? Yes, um, you you could do that. Um, also, uh, I have a question about visibility. Is there is there in, enough either light pollution or stars in the sky in order for us to see our way, or do would we need any special equipment to see at night? Also, how late into the night is it? Um, it is nine p.m. And it's probably going to take you most, you know, about four or five hours of travel, depending on how well uh, uh, William's roll is. I haven't given you a difficulty level yet. Try a six of survival. Six on survival. Wow, that's really good. Um, I'm going to say your uh, your difficulty here was a three. So I'll give you an action point. You succeeded with style. And uh, you, you managed to find a, a good route to shave some time off of your journey following the following the river, basically. Uh, but, you know, not too close. You, you know to stay to not get too close to the river because there could be mire lurks. Uh, but you kind of know just how close you can get. Um, and it should take you right there. So. Uh, yeah, where is my where is my screen? Hang on a second. I need to like figure out how I can program this to snap to targets, and I was trying to figure that out before we did the stream, but I couldn't find it. So hmm, that'd be nice. Yeah. It would be nice because I would like to be able to do that. So I'm gonna give you uh, two AP. Thank you. And I'll say that uh, Delta. I'm gonna give you an AP also. Power of right. friendship. Yeah. And like Kurosawa and Delta just high five. <laughs> so you set oh. off into the into the night and uh, you're traveling through the desert and it is a lonely road and it takes you uh, quite some time. Uh, but you do reach a you do reach a point at which you start to you you stop because you hear a sound hear a, a strange sound in the night uh, like a clicking sound you're not sure what it is i just imagine delta and kurosawa just listening to the wanderer by dion as they're as they're like trekking <laughs> <laughs> yeah and also garrett just to just to be a bit more flavorful the entire time they've been making the journey william has gone into like a meditative state because he is in his element the desert and so he basically takes out both of his revolvers and he's been twirling them the entire time without breaking a sweat. If you want me to make an agility roll to justify that, I'm more than happy to do so. Actually, you know what I would rather do, William? What I would rather yeah. do is think of that as a self-compel. And I got Sonny coming back in here in a second. Um, oh, boy. So what I'm going to say is that is a self-compel. Where, oh. And uh, it's going to be under the aspect. Uh, 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 I'm going to say live each day by swords, lead and the code of the Duke. So you did spend all of that time. Uh, and welcome back, Sonny. We are. Uh, we everything good? Yeah. I mean, I got control of my computer again. I must have done something. Thanks, Rondo, for the. You know, not freaking me out moment of like calming me down that someone wasn't overtaking my screen because it was like not quite right. All right. If anything happens, uh, let us know. But uh, yeah, if you click, you, I think you probably just accidentally clicked on a profile and it was following. It was following sure the I, cursor. I'm sure I did. But uh, like I was not able to move my own cursor. Yeah. So it, like trip me out. So. All right. Let me oh. know if anything else happens. All right, cool. So um, anyway, where we're at is William and Delta. 
fact, if I just click on Delta, I wonder if it'll... Yeah, so I just click uh, on Delta. Now move your cursor, Delta. Move your do cursor. Do I get another viewpoint or... Farther. No. Go go somewhere else. What are we looking at? Are we on looking at Miro or are we looking at StreamYard? This is Miro. Okay. All right, never mind. All right, forget it. Okay, uh, so anyway, uh, William is out there with um, Delta, and they are going to go and try and talk to the sense, but uh, Sunny doesn't know this unless she snuck over and eavesdropped on their conversation, and we'll resolve that in a second. Uh, but right now, uh, I'm compelling William under Live Each Day by Swords, Lead in the Coat of the Duke. You were so in engaged in spinning your guns and getting ready and just preparing yourself uh, that you not only distracted yourself and Delta... Well, you not only distracted yourself, but you distracted Delta, and you uh, had you were not paying attention. And I'm not going to oh. say any more until I hear whether or not you're going to accept that compel. Yeah, I accept the compel. All right, so I'm going to add a uh, a fate point for you. Okay. There I'm so is. sad about the fate point. <laughs> There it is. There's your fate point. Well, listen, you've seen you you've seen old pictures of the Duke, and you know that the way he prepares for battle is he spins his guns, and you th you just were doing what you you've learned to do, and you did not in any way detect the swarms of bloat flies that were following you. No. Uh, and there Isn't they. Uh, yeah. And so uh, yeah. Let me go. Okay. Let me find. Where are my bloat flies, Mr. Producer? Where are my bloat flies? Oh yes, here they are. I think this would be them. Yes, a swarm of bloat flies. And uh, I'm gonna say there are two swarms attacking you. Damn it all! How to kill them? <laughs> so that so there's two swarms of four bloat flies. All right, let me get my swarms here. Oops, control. There they are. All right. Uh, I want to put you on a map. I didn't actually have a desert map, I don't think. You can just put us right there in the in the image of the desert at night. We can get the theater of the mind and all that. No, I think I think I'm gonna put you. I'm gonna see if I can zoom in here. All right. Next time I'll have a I'll have a, a battle map like in Final Fantasy. But uh, for now, let's just do it this way. So I'm going to say that the grid lines are kind of how you can judge distance. Okay. All right. So there's uh, one group of them. Here's another group, and uh, they get to go first. So. So each of these squares is one zone. So you and Delta were walking through the desert together, and you did not see these float flies coming up on you. All right, here we go. All right, so so uh, float fly group one is is going to attack. Uh, just going to attack William, and the and then we'll get the next one. So hang on a second here. Let me do this. All right, so their attack is two. All right, awesome. And uh, the, oh yes, of course, the GM gets fate points also, I forgot to mention. So uh, let me grab some fate points for myself. I mean, I had, the GM has four fate points to spend. Two, actually two fate points, two fate points, because there's one for each player that I'm up against. So I get one fate point for each of you. Okay, so uh, rolling attack. Oh boy, the bloat flies did not do well. <laughs> they rolled. They rolled a negative three what? on their attack. Yeah, they did. They they got a really shit roll. Uh, so there's epic. <laughs> okay. Now this is how swarms work in fate. However, essentially you're fighting all four of them as one unit. Um, so each additional one that's in the party gives them a plus one. So their attack is two. So they're attacking at a two, three, four, five. So minus three 
Uh, they just did a, they just rolled a two. So what is your defense roll? And they're firing disgusting maggot gut maggots at you from a distance. So you can roll your agility, William. All right, I'm gonna roll my agility. Give me one second. All right. It is just a two. A two? Okay, good. So uh, that means, let's see, they rolled, what did I say they rolled? Uh, five. Uh, they had a five and they three. got a negative. They rolled a two, right? So they just, so you actually ties favor the defender. So I'm going to invoke disgusting maggot shooting attack. And uh, I'm going to give them plus two to their roll. And actually, let me just ask you real quick, your armor. Uh, yeah. Uh, I got battle armor. Yeah. I'm going to say that uh, against a shooting attack, you can spend AP on that. So uh, if you want to use AP to improve your roll, invoking your armor, you can. Uh, but they are at two shifts of damage. So unless you're spending that, you take two shifts of damage. Yeah, let me let me spend one action point. All right. So that fills up your one stress box. My physical stress box? Yep. Okay. So you can see on my screen here, that fills up your one stress box. All right. Okay. Now for you, uh, Delta, you also get attacked by the bloat flies, and uh, they're rolling now. Uh, uh, as as uh, that hits William, he screams, oh, God damn it. <laughs> oh, yeah. The maggots are all over you. It's super disgusting, bro. Oh. Uh, so, so that is, uh, they. oh, this time, this time we rolled well. Uh, so they actually rolled an eight. No. Uh, yeah, they they just rolled an eight at you, Delta, and they just eject the most disgusting, vile ball of of like juicy maggots at you, and they just are coming right at you. So you can roll your agility to attempt to get out of the way. I got an invoke ready to go, but I want to see what Delta system does. All right. Uh, holy shit. I got a four. Got a yeah. four? All right. So they've got four shifts on you currently. Uh. So let's see. Delta has... You have AP to spend. Yeah, I and have also, I have five AP, and since I have four endurance, I have uh, one, two, three, and four uh, box. You have five AP? Remember, AP from last session doesn't carry over. Yes, I have five AP from this session. Okay, so uh, what equipment aspects are you going to invoke to help you here? Um, there it unless is. unless the maggots count as ballistic, they are ballistic. They are. Yep. Okay. Do I get two free invokes from my from my armor or? I guess I meant ballistic by bullets. I suppose that's what I meant. But uh, no, I'm going to say they apply here. So yeah, you get two free invokes on your armor. What was the what was that perk? It was um, my tempered raider ar armor. You s you said that the armor give gives me that at the beginning of like combat against um, it's a. Uh, it's high ballistic resistance and high energy okay, resistance. Cool. So, uh, yep, go ahead and, and uh, tell me how many points you're spending. I'll spend I'll spend both of the free free invokes on it, and then just take the two. Okay, so that reduces it by four, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, invoke. So you're so we're at dead even right now. So I'm going to invoke disgusting maggot shooting attack for one of my uh, fate points. That's my last fate point. So that gives you two shifts of damage. Okay. All right. So I'm going to mark that off. Now your turn to uh, attack, William. Well, that's easy. Uh, as I wipe the maggots off of me, I pull out both Margo and John. And I scream, Sam Han, you sons of bitches! And I use my spoil guns on the on the on um, the swarm of flies that attack me. I'm gonna roll for it right now. 
Ooh. Okay. Six. So you roll the six. All right. I'm gonna say uh, under the under their aspect, fast swarming little buggers. I'm gonna put you at a uh, plus negative two on your roll because of additional difficulty because they're really hard to hit at this distance. Oh, hold up. I got one more action point, and I would like to use my better criticals to improve my shots. All right. So so that makes so with the negative two and your better criticals, your final roll is one sec, let me look at them. My once per scene when you inflict three ships damage to an enemy, you can spend one fate point to inflict consequence KO if no consequence available. Yeah. And so you so with the negative two, you were at three shifts before that perk. Yeah, I, I got. You six. rolled six, right? Yeah. yeah. Actually, yeah. So that works uh, because they only rolled a two. So yeah, you definitely succeeded. So I'm gonna say that your perk, which is better criticals, uh, like you freaking smoked them. Like you just went bang, 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 and you just watched four flies drop. Mm -hmm. And so they are they're dead. And uh, these flies just moved into one zone distance away from you, Delta. So it's your turn to attack. Uh, Delta's going to move move forward. He's going to take out his axe, and he's going to attack um, as a melee attack. Okay. And did you have a perk for melee attacks? No. I okay, have I have gun, gun fu, nerd rage, uh, two, two levels of nerd rage, and better thing, better crits. What was your gun, gun fu? I just want to refresh. Uh, rank one. Uh, when you succeed at a ranged attack, spend one AP to hit a second target in the same zone at the same damage. Right. I'm going to say since you're crossing a zone to get to him, if you're going to use a melee attack, you're at a negative one to hit here. Because you're running you're running at them. Okay. Okay. All right. So go ahead and roll your uh, melee skill. Well, uh, it's going to be negative one. Uh, oh, they man. they rolled a zero, uh, so they can actually I, succeeded I in defending. Him, can I give him one of my fate points to invoke Mr. Gutsy to help him out? Uh, um, I, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say no here, but I'm uh, gonna say that uh, Delta can use he can use his own action points or fate points if he wants. Um. Even if it's if it's a success, that it's not going to do any damage, right? Because the because damage is calculated based on the shifts over the defense. Correct. So, well, no. You if you improve your score enough, then you've done actual damage to them. So if you invoke like an aspect on your weapon with your uh, with your action points, it increases it increases your roll. So the only rule is it has to be narratively it has to narratively make sense. Okay. It's up to you. If you want to wait, uh, give them another shot at you. Uh, you can do that. I'll. I, I'm not going to spend fate right now. Okay. Uh, so they they move into range and uh, they are rolling their attack and they got a five. Uh, so they rolled a five on you, Delta. Okay. So I'd roll be... your defense, and you're in. They're in melee range now, so you're going to be rolling either melee, unarmed, or you know, basically a close, a close quarters combat skill. So, so either I roll agility or or melee. Uh, in or defense? this range, you would roll melee or unarmed, whichever is right. higher. And uh, since you're melee. using an axe, you're going to roll melee. I would assume. Okay, what's your roll? Uh, plus one. All right, and uh, yeah, so they inflict uh, four shifts of damage on you unless you improve your roll with fate points or action points. Uh, I'll use... Um, I will use my heavy... Oh, High physical resistance. My my uh, my tempered raider armor. Uh, I'm gonna use that 
on um, and use an AP to try to knock that down. Is it is it you, a one for one? You can stack them. You can spend as much AP on a single equipment aspect as you want. Uh, I'll, I'm just going to spend one. Okay, so you take three shifts of damage. I'm going to put that on your profile. Uh, so that goes right there. All right, uh, so now it is your turn to counterattack. William, you go first. And uh, they are... They are close enough that you can engage in melee if you want. But you're they're no, basically no. crawling all over Delta, so... N negative one to melee if you try and... Because uh, y you risk hitting Delta otherwise. Mm. William? I I'm here. I'm here. I'm deciding. I'm... Mm. If I get a negative one... Either on my guns or my sword, I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna hit Delta. Is what we mean to say? Yeah, they're crawling all over him. So I kind of, I kind of want us to start getting a little faster at this. And so my goal is kind of have it yeah, in your yeah, mind yeah. what you're gonna do. Yeah, I'm gonna. You know what? I'm gonna make it quick. I'm just gonna cut those flies right off of them. Okay, so roll your melee. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, five. Okay, they're at a negative one. Uh, so, yeah, you, you basically... And you're... That's, so you're at a four, right? Because of the negative one yep. against you. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, you took out... You took out three of them. Just like, and the, stop moving, damn it! <laughs> all right, so the last one attacks, and it only scores a one. So roll your defense, Delta, because he's crawling on you, trying to, like, bite you. Roll your defense in melee. So that, that'd be based off of the melee weapon skill? Oh, wait, shit. Did you get a chance to attack, Delta? I don't think I gave you a chance, did I? No. Nope. I'm sorry. No, no, it's your, it's your attack. Never mind. Disregard what I said. Roll your uh, melee attack against the blowfly. Uh, one. All right. So, and uh, his defense was a one. So he he successfully defended unless you spend an action point. No, I'm not going to spend it. Okay. So he successfully defended. The bloat fly is attacking, and he rolled uh he rolled a five on, on you, Delta. <laughs> so roll your oh, melee okay. defense. Oh. Okay, so what do I use for melee defense? Do I use agility or do I use the melee melee weapon skill? You can't. Agility is not going to help you because he's crawling on you. So okay, um, I mean, I mean, you could roll it. Is your agility higher than your melee? No, it's not. Then you wouldn't want to roll that. So roll your melee. Okay. Uh, finally, um, four. All right, so you take one shift of damage, unless you invoke something. No, so, I'll take it. I'll take all it. All right, cool. So uh, that's your one stress box. All right, your turn, William. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna finish it up, and I'm gonna cut the the fly off of him. All right, so I'm gonna say it's only one fly now. So this is a precision strike. You're at a negative two. So if you're rolling melee. Yeah, yeah. Let's see what happens. Holy shit! I cut myself in real life. Oh, I'm bleeding. Shit. Are you all right? You need to take, dip out. No, 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 no. I'm good. I'm good. And, I'm uh, done. Seriously? I got. What's that? I got a five. What's that, Sunny? Said... How did he get cut? I just hit myself on something. <laughs> I don't know. Because. That might be like, all right, this this might be one of those moments where you got to factor in like humanity within the equation. No, no, no. Yeah. I just scraped my knee on something. I'm good. Don't worry. And I got a I got a five. I'm good he, on the fly. All right, uh, that's enough. All right, so you killed the fly. Whew, that was close. 
All right, now I'm going to say you guys are, are able to get to your destination, uh, and I'm just going to briefly uh, switch over to the other part of the party. So while you guys were out fighting flies, uh, Sonny and Carl were back at the town of Laffin. And uh, so if there's anything that uh, you two want to do, I'll let you step in. Otherwise, we can resolve what happens out in the desert. Well... Sonny and I, I mean, she, we were in the heat of the conversation about what our ideas, you know, for this were, and now she's completely out of the loop. So I'm filling her in and we will pick up with that. Let's say what in the hallway. Well, I'll, I'll give Sonny uh, the floor here. Cause uh, I'm just, yeah. I just kind of narrated that you, you were frustrated with them and you, uh, you left stormed off or something like that. And uh, I'll let you tell me how you came back, if you did, or where you were at. Well, thoughts, or I came and got me, and said, "Why didn't you tell them what they said? What you said, Carl?" Well. We decided that we would kind of send Delta ahead to attempt some sort of contact with these people under the assumption that if they attempted to kill him on site, he would come back and get us. Otherwise, he would try to negotiate some sort of treaty to where we can get in there and do what we need to do maybe find out what they need because they're going to need something. They always need something. If they, if you try to cooperate, it's a give and take. So he's going to find out William went with him halfway. It's a half a day's journey or so. He's camped out halfway. I've got an active reading on his pit boy and I wasn't going to leave without, asking you what you're how you how are you going to act if things don't go the way you want are you just going to turn on us because we need to know we don't have any reason to trust you but we're we're obligated to instill some sort of trust in each other under the contract we agreed to so where do you stand that's right you're the only I, one in the room. I stand on the group decision, but. And listen, listen, let me just, let me just assure you. If it turns out we've got a problem with these scents, we're going to go through the sense. We're not, we're not going to let anything get in the way because we know what we need to do. Everybody is task oriented. We're on target. We're moving. This is the time. Are you with us? I'm absolutely with you. If you let's are. leave, let's go. I just want our group to be 100% committed, and I wasn't okay. sensing that. I'm packed. They're no, you're committed because they're okay. there. So they're waiting for us to there, come. There, but you know, talk to me. My biggest thing was. If you're not ready and prepared to waste since after we get our own little robot army, robot guard guards, whatever we want to call them, are you really on our team? If you're trying to make peace for some group, if our team you know, is team, I'm not, saying, if our, I'm not saying that's you. I'm just saying if our if team is team slaughter, get, then no, I'm not on that team. If I if I'm on team, look out for us. Look out for number one. Those yes. people aren't a threat to number one. So I'm not going to stop, get off task and go deal with some people that never did shit to me, agreed to leave me alone just so I can fulfill some sort of obsessive fantasy. No, I don't need that. What I need to do is stay on target. And right now our, our companions are on target and we were deciding what our target's going to be. Are we, is it going to be with them or are you going to go off on your own? If you want to go with us, and come with us. Oh, if you're in charge, one, I'm with you. 
I'm not in charge of anybody, but we happen to agree on this. You were the. You may be a bit persuasive. I don't know if to roll for that, but I would say that's the right tact. And if you're, and if the guys that we're going with aren't able, to, but see, they're not. If you're not able to say we can get halfway through the mission, then we have to kill them. If you're not able to do that, you can't be on the mission. Well, I'll tell you what. I've made it more than clear what my intentions are. My intentions are to stay on task. And if anything gets in the way of that task, it doesn't matter whether they're labeled as an ally or a friend or a companion. If they become an obstacle, I remove them. Well, if you had bra armor, we'd be twinsies then. We're perfect. <laughs> Get your shit. We're leaving. All right, let's go. All right, awesome. Okay, cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you uh, each a fate point for good role play there, and I'm gonna say stuck uh, on uh, that Amazon. We got the real Fallout right here. Uh, let's that. not go that far. <laughs> we got a lot of, uh, we got a lot of technical issues to work out. Let's not go to crazy town. They're winning. We got technical issues to work out. He says, yeah, we got ideas about that. So next week's gonna be even better. Yeah, I have ideas on that as well. And we keep the same energy we got right now. Dude, Amazon's going to go down, bro. I'm ready for it. Yeah, (laughs) any day now. All right, so there you go, Sonny. I'm going to give you that under uh, your aspect. uh, Hardships. (laughs) Hardships. Uh, I don't know. Tell me if you agree with this, but nothing feels as good as making a grown man cry. Begging's a close second. You like the idea that you're getting uh, Carl on your side. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then I'm going to issue Carl a fate point. And that is going to be under the... Uh, under the aspect, a deadly lone wolf looking for a pack, uh, which is he 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 pretends not to be a leader, but he's kind of taking on that role, maybe without knowing it, because he needs he has a need to have a family. Again, you can only think of somebody that was that kind of hero. <laughs> All right, hmm. so. Uh, <laughs> So let's return to our intrepid heroes in the desert. And uh, you have arrived just shot just short of the town. And unfortunately, my picture of the town is going to be in daylight, uh, but it's nighttime. So theater of the mind and all of that. Uh, But uh, Delta and William, you have arrived at the edge of the town. And what what you have discovered is there is an old pre-war bridge that goes across the Colorado River. And uh, uh, on top of the bridge and under the bridge, it appears that a community, a shanty town, uh, but a pretty well constructed one, as shanty towns go, has been constructed on the bridge. And uh, you see, it looks like uh, normal people from this distance appear to be patrolling, uh, you know, the the watchtowers and stuff like that. Uh, so you're kind of in range, and. Uh, it's up to you guys whether you want to part ways here or approach the town together. Um, I thought I thought we discussed that halfway to yes it that yep. oh yes my bad. Well, in that case, then uh, I revise my okay, so my narration. This so is what so, Delta's seeing. Yeah. So so what Delta is seeing is this. Uh, hang on one second here. So, Ooh, wow. although, just imagine it's not, it's nighttime, however. So, Delta, uh, so actually, this is pretty much the angle you're seeing it from. So, this is a bridge uh, that goes uh, partially across the river. It's partially collapsed, but uh, there it is. So, in this settlement, you can see that they've built a kind of community underneath the bridge, and there's also structures on top of the bridge, and you also see uh, rather prominent uh, walls around it. And so you're kind of looking at this from a distance. Um, you see that there's guards out there. So it's up to you if you want to just approach flat out or try and sneak. Like, what do you want to do? Do you tell William that we're close? 
Well, I thought I thought we would have we would have separated like we're like you've we're in... seen, yeah. Let me let me rephrase. So so William, you're out there in the desert waiting halfway, and Delta is approaching the town. Be before before he went to go to the town, William wanted to basically give him like uh, basically said, "All right, Delta, this is where we part ways," but. We, we don't know each other that well, but I just want you to know that I am nervous for your safety. I know. Anything happens. Anything. Don't be afraid to holler. I will come in guns blazing. I know. I'll send you, I'll send you a message from, from the pit boy. Who knows? Okay. This could be Delta's last episode. <sighs> don't say that, please. <laughs> no, I would... Well, you know, uh, strategies have consequences. You never know. <laughs> they could be cannibal sins. You never know. We actually had that in, in, in Otter's game show, but that's beside the point. All right. So, Delta, uh, your decision, sir. All right. Delta is going to cautiously approach slowly. He's not going to have any weapons in hand. But he is he is going to approach slowly. Okay, so uh, you get you basically uh, you get to the gate, and uh, before long, you you see some floodlights come up, and they're shining on you, and you uh, you hear a guard say, "Who's that out there?" Uh, hello, um, I'm Delta, and I heard this was a uh, community of sense. And I was hoping to find refuge. Yeah, that's right. What of it? Where do you come from? Well, it's a it's a long story, but I'm originally from from the Commonwealth. Do you want to just tell them your you know about the dead man's cash and all of that, or like well, how much do you want? You can just tell me that you explain the story. I to tell them I want. tell them I tell them like kind of my origin that I was made by an institute sci scientist, but I don't explain, like, why I'm out here exactly. Um, I just explain, like, I've been traveling. All right. In that case, uh, roll a speech test. Okay. Going to have you roll a speech test uh, and just tell me what your role is. All right. Give me a second. Uh, because and I will give you the roll that is being rolled against you. Uh, plus two. Plus two? Okay. Interesting. Well, uh, let's see, that is a one. So I'm going to say uh, very good. Oh wait! I just realized, I just realized <laughs> I'm not sharing this my screen with the folks at home, but you can see what I'm looking at. So never mind. All right. No, I just pretty much see stand by. Yeah, hang on a second. <laughs> uh, so I, I, you hear a voice behind you, Delta, and uh, the voice is uh about ten paces behind you. Uh, where, where is it? Where's my character sheet? Okay, cool. There it is. Also, I have I have 360 vision, so I'm not, like, surprised. Uh, well, actually, you are, uh, because this character, uh, you did not you did not notice this character behind you. Uh -oh. And uh, you basically hear someone say, all right, that's far enough. This is uh, lucky for you. I believe your story. And uh, the man that you see is uh, this man here. And he says, uh, so you came from the Commonwealth, and you're looking for a new home? Is that it? Because somehow I feel like there's more to your story. It's... It, it, I... I... And, like, Delta's is trying to, to express that it's a long and painful story. Uh, the man's shoulders, he has a very long rifle, which appears to have a very well-constructed scope, uh, and you get the sense that he could do some real damage with it. Um, 
And he shoulders it, though, and he says, uh, Lucky for you, I happen to think that you, you haven't got an ounce of guile. But I do know for a fact that uh, f four strangers showed up in the town looking for some kind of some kind of old vault, looking for some kind of treasure. So I know you're here for that. Lucky for you, I believe that you you mean us no harm. So, if you're if you are willing to accept our hospitality. I'm willing to hear you out. Does that sound fair to you? What vaults are you are you talking about? Uh, he, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna explain that you would assume he's talking about the Enclave Vault. No, no, I. Are you trying to lie again? <laughs> okay, let me let me let me just think about this for a quick second. Um. All right. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna keep it up because I don't have. I don't have a high enough speech to keep this up. So, Delta goes. Wise decision. Delta goes. So you have spies. Of course we do. We're at war. All right. Well, let me put. Let me put it this way. My compatriots and I want to talk. Fortunately for you, we were fixing to uh, preemptively deal with any threats, if you understand what I mean. But since you're here under a flag of truce, I respect that. And uh, we're interested in talking. Follow me. So I'm just going to uh, kind of give you a quick summary. Uh, he, he takes you into the town, uh, and uh, you, go to, you go to a spot, uh, I would say, pretty high up on the town. Let me find a... I got a map for you. The captain did some preparation this week. Uh, let's see here. Uh, where was it? There. It I would is. call okay. this a whole hell of a lot. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so this is the town, and he takes you uh, to the top of the bridge, and uh, let's see. He takes you to the mayor's house, which is this one, right here. Um, and it's pretty nice. There's a lot of pre-war tech in there, you know, uh, old Radiation King TVs, nice couches. There's even some pleasant, uh, some pleasant music playing. And uh, he sits you down and says, "My name, my name is Marshall Colton. I'm from the Commonwealth, just like you." And uh, for, and he says, uh, "And like you, I was a synth. In fact." Something familiar about you. I never saw your kind before, but uh, uh, seems like I should know you. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna come. Um, Delta's gonna be compelled to like pick up and look at all the pre-war tech due to his uh, have to take everything apart and put it back together again aspect. So at the very least, he's going to take try to take stuff. Um off its, like, shelving and, like, closely inspect it. Can I get, like, a fate point for that? Nah, no. <laughs> but he's gonna say, don't break nothing. Oh, sorry, sorry, I'm... I'm just... I'm fascinated with different relics from the past. And he, he like, he, like, puts it back, like, tries to, like, make it all nice. I'm gonna say that there is something about him that's very familiar to you, but you can't quite place it. Said, is there anything that I can roll to investigate that or sure yeah what what's okay. uh what's a skill that let's see what's your relevant skill either investigate or perception I would say uh I don't have um actually I, have... I uh I will let you roll lore the Institute also so you have um you have lore or you could roll Perception or lore, it's equal. But I'll give you a slight advantage if you roll lore, because you you know Institute stuff. So I'm going to give you a plus one to your roll uh, with lore. Uh, well, okay. Let me rephrase that. I will reduce the difficulty. So uh, the difficulty of this would be a three, but since you're using lore Institute, I will make it a two. Okay. 
Uh, I got a one. Got a one. Okay. Well, I'm going to say uh, you succeed, but at a cost. So I'm going to say that uh, you you accidentally blurred out that. Uh, what what was the doctor who created you, Doctor Irons? Uh, Monty yeah. Irons. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to say you recognize who he is. So you succeeded at a cost, and this is in fate. This is what happens when you fail a roll. Sometimes it just means that you succeeded, but something went kind of wrong when you did it. Um, so you have actually revealed his aspect. The memories of the courser are my cross to bear. And you recognize that he is a courser, which uh, hunted rebel since and brought them back to the Institute before it was destroyed. So his job was basically to hunt runaways. And uh, they're known for being extremely deadly and extremely ruthless. And uh, in the course of discovering this, you blurted it out uh, back when I was you know, listening to Dr. my creator, Dr. Irons. So you somehow revealed that your creator is Dr. Irons. All so right. if you want to role play that, go ahead. But otherwise I would just say that, yeah, that's uh, how you what was, the, what was the last thing that um, Colton said? I forget. I forget. <laughs> he was saying I'm also from the Institute. Oh, well, actually, I was created by an Institute scientist by the name of, of Monty I Irons. I he in his retirement he looked for he looked for companionship and built me as a bodyguard, but um there was a misunderstanding and um he uh, well, you didn't, I didn't mean so, you had to blurt out the whole story, <laughs> but if you want, you can. And um let's just say I left after that mistake. So I've just been around the Commonwealth sin since then. How long has it been now? He says, well, son, they say that confession is good for the soul, and that is quite the mouthful. Uh, oh, base oh, shit. You're a courser, aren't you? I was, but the Institute's dead. And so is the Corsa. I am what you see. When I left the Institute, I installed an additional personality. An old lawman that was in their data files. A just type. I can only imagine what those assholes over at Laugh Laughing have told you. We don't want no more trouble with the, with the humans, but we, they ain't given us no choice. Now, I know that they probably told you that if you side with them, things will go better for you. But I'm here to tell you they can't be trusted. And we will do whatever is necessary to protect our interests. Now, they would kill us all if they had the choice, and I'm not aiming to let them. So allow me to just suggest that uh, you join our side. And we'll give you... We'll, we're a good sort, and we live by a code of justice around here. And once laughing has been dealt with, you and your friends don't have any help from us that you need. I, I greatly appre appreciate it. Um, I heard a story that um, they took one of your kind and uh, strip and stripped them for parts. That's right. They Care killed him. It was murder. Care to expand on it? What exactly happened that day? We had been trading with some of the folk, and uh, he had strolled into town. There were a few, there were a few uh, travelers in the bar who took issue with him being a synth. They started making fun of him. He ignored them, and then, when they wouldn't let up, he decided to defend himself. So later that night, they took him out. They tore him apart. And uh, they used his spare parts to repair their motorcycle. The only reason I know all this is because we recovered his data chip and we have his memories. Now, they think he's just a toaster and uh, doesn't feel no pain. But you and I know better, don't we? He felt every minute of that. And to them... We're just machines like this here. He point. He slaps uh, his own TV, the Radiation King. He's like, we're just spare parts to them. 
they'll never understand. So, I gave them plenty of chances, believe me. I've tried to parlay, I've tried to negotiate, but it always ends in blood. Because they don't trust machines and they never will. And by the way, neither will your companions. They'll never trust you. But I understand you got to work with them. Well, I think that they'll never... They won't... I think they don't trust me because of my unique situation. And he point he points to his uh, ma- his uh, major guts he had. Yeah, that'll do it. That'll that'll do your head in. Uh, you, you got you got a you got a few screws loose. Is that what you're telling me, Junior? Yeah, yeah. You dare call me a mistake? Oh, there he is. No. Uh, D- yes. Delta, Delta says, "Just, just ignore him. Don't. He doesn't speak for me." I know from my contacts in the town that you have an identify friend foe signal that can open that vault, and that it can also give you access to the kernel that controls the securitrons. Now, all I want is to upload the data to those Securitrons, which will restore their root program, giving them sentience and free will. And it'll be their choice whether they join us or not. All I'm asking is that you go in there and give us access. And my word to you is that unless the Securitrons choose something different, I will not initiate an attack on the town unless we are attacked. What do you say? Would you and your companions be amenable to that? Can I, can I say know. something out of character? Uh, well, he can't you, make that. He can't just just to make sure we're all on the same page. He can't make that decision. No, but so. he can say whatever he can say what he wants to him. He could tell him, <laughs> "Sure, I'll take that deal." And well, then, the question was, will you, "Is your party willing to do this?" Right. Yeah, so what I'm saying is there's two separate things. A character can say whatever they really want to say. Whether or not that... That doesn't mean that it's true or that it binds the party to anything. So so that's... Fair enough. So he can say whatever he wants here, but then it's up to him to deal with whatever the consequences of that are when he gets back to the party. So what I'm going to say happens... um, uh, Because there's one more point about this... uh, I forgot to mention earlier, because the captain is balancing a lot of things today, uh, but I I forgot to mention that the mayor was offering you, in return for helping them, uh, you can keep whatever you want that you can carry from the vault, but also they have an old uh, pre-war tank uh, that they would give your party. And uh, here, Marshal Colton points to a set of T-60 power armor, which is uh, standing like a statue in the corner of the room, and he says, you help us, that suit of armor is yours. Um, Delta... What? (laughs) Well, well, okay, Delta, so give him your reply, and then I'm going to let the rest of the party, you're going to have to contact the party and loop them in on this. All right, Um, so... First off, Delta is enamored by the T by the T sixty armor. Yes, it's very pretty. Um, but Delta Delta says so. You only want Sorry, the security guys. trons to have free will. Well, how about this? I, what I can do is I can go in and upload the program my, my that program myself. Also, I need to interrupt again out of character. He does not have the ability to do that. I have the... Or William. We wouldn't send him. One of us... We wouldn't send him with that IFF by himself, period. If we agreed to talk about that earlier, thought to talk about that earlier, that would... That's how that would... Yeah, turn that's fair enough. So, so Delta, just recap for me. What is it you're saying to him? Because I was so, not following quite. So, Colton... Marshall Colton said said that to give, to give them access and they would upload a program that would change the Securitrons to have free will. Delta is suggesting that he 
takes their program and uploads uploads it to the Securitrons instead of them uploading it. And Delta's reasoning is is he doesn't exactly trust the trust them yet. You mean your party? When you say them, you mean your party? Who's them? I'm confused on that. Uh, sorry, them. Them is um, that commu the the synth community. Okay. Because he doesn't. Because Delta does does not know if if. Yeah, they yeah. Get no, access... That's what he's saying. Because because in there there they have the same problem. The synths can't get close to the Securitrons. Um, you know that that's and they're always being interfered with. He explains this to you, but uh, they're always being interfered with by the laughing townsfolk. So they're ne they're never able to get close enough to the si the Securitrons, but you can. not So he's going to give you the program to upload to to give them sentience and free will. Oh, he's going to give me the program. I thought yes. he's asking if you're agreeing to do it. I th for some reason I thought that somehow remotely to give them to give them access and that they would No, they there's would nothing upload. remote. You, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. It's v it's very simple. You are going to approach the Securitrons. Your IFF will let you in. The townspeople want you to turn them hostile to the synths. The synths want you to give them free will, which the town people believe will turn them hostile to the town. So it's a, it, that's that's what's at issue here. And it's also the third option that Miss Potter gave us. Is to make them your own. So yes, we'll get to that in just a second. I'm trying to wrap this conversation up so we can get the rest of the group in here. So so what I'm going to say is Colton says, I understand that you have a lot to think about. Uh, you can use the spare room over there and uh, feel free to contact your your party and uh, get their thoughts. Okay. So what I want to do is for the next for the next few hours, I want to just go around town to get a sense of their culture and who these who these people yeah. are. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm just gonna do a really simple uh let's see, what was your relevant skill there? Uh speech. Uh, we could potentially use speech. Uh oh, meet and greet. But you're you're investigating like uh what they're like what they're like. Uh because I'm probably going to do kind of a swift narration here to get the rest of the party back in. Uh, but what right. I'm going to say is your best bet. I will let you roll either Lore, the Institute, because um, you're observing them. Um, you're not you're not using speech to like persuade them. Um, I'm going to say you're just observing them. So you could use that or perception. Base what. What Delta's trying to do, well, I mean, Delta's also... Them. All right, I, I think speech is fair, because you want to talk to them and get kind of a... Yeah, share share a drink of oil, you know. <laughs> okay. That's everything. Here's what I'm going to say. If you just want to kind of observe them, that will be quick. Um, if you want to, like, really get to know them, that's going to take longer, and you won't get back to the party for a while. So... Um, that, that's just the only difference is you'll be away for longer. I I will take I will take that extra time because I think it will be very worthwhile worthwhile to really get to know them, like to see if they basically Delta's trying to find out that if these Securitrons have free will, will the sense just automatically um tell tell the Securitrons, oh, they're humans, they're they're bad. They're gonna kill. They're gonna kill us. And the Securitrons go. Okay. Go, go and attack go. them. Or, or if they just generally want want these Securitrons just to have free will. Um. Yeah, I will say. Uh, go ahead and roll on a difficulty on a difficulty two speech. Okay. By the way, Garrett, um, in character. The hours that Delta's been doing that, Delta's been purifying water. I'm gonna make a quick survival roll to see how much uh, purified water I get. Is that okay? Yep. Uh, and I'll say uh, just a difficulty two. And uh, yeah. A grand total three. Three? Okay. So I'm gonna say that uh, you succeed and uh, you have formed an impression and uh, it takes you a while, but you get there and. Uh, 
Are you going to then rejoin the group at the Laughing Town? Can I fi find out my my results, or do you want me? Or I'll narrate that when you get back to the party. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Cool. So you're going to head back. So I'm going to say it takes you guys a day, and uh, the rest of the the team is stewing. So it's the next day, and you all meet back at the inn, and. Uh, Unless you're going to hold anything back deliberately, I'm just going to narrate Delta that you fill them all in on everything that was discussed. And no, so I'm not going to. I'm not going to hold anything back because we're the rest of the party is already. This is a very contentious issue. Delta yeah. would just say everything. Okay. William is going to like when he sees Delta again. He's like, "Oh, my, my friend," and he's going to give him a hug. <laughs> it's like so happy to see him. He's okay. And, uh, well, that's that's very sweet. That's very sweet, William. Yeah, and to celebrate, to celebrate, he's gonna pull out. I got a four on my survival skill roll, uh, Garrett. He's gonna pull out a small liter of water and say, "It ain't sake back at my home, but I did want to share something with you, friend, and give him purified water." He takes he takes the water. And he says to friendship, and then just pours it on the exact top of his of his Mister Gutsy head. Oh, <laughs> and you see like a little bit of steam come off, just like a little bit. All right. So, uh, so, so, just to kind of bring that home, uh, you explain to them everything that just occurred. So the party is now aware of everything that they that you just heard. And uh, additionally, the result of your role, Delta, is that you gained the impression from being among the synths, and, you know, you can tell me, I assume you're sharing this with the party, unless you say otherwise, uh, but the impression you gained is that while they are not, uh, shall we say, genocidal, specifically, they hate, they, they really do... They really do feel that the Laffin people will never leave them in peace and can never be trusted. And there's a minority of them that are okay if the town of Laughlin were to cease to exist. But your impression is that if peace could be achieved, they would be open to it. Now, I am also going to issue you a compel under what's best in life is tea and good conversation. Because you got so you were so happy and delighted to have such wonderful civilized conversation, especially with such such other fine robots as yourself, uh, that you kind of lost track of time and lost track of your actual goals. And if you accept this compel, you're actually going to vastly overstate what good people they are and how trustworthy they are and how we have nothing to worry about. So will you accept that? And it's not because you're lying; it's because that's your impression. So are you accepting that compel? I'm I'm going to deny that that compel. Okay, so I will remove a fate point then. Uh and this Oh this wait, episode. I thought I thought it's I don't gain one, not that I lose one. No, you spend a fate point to resist a compel. That's how oh. that works. Okay. So I'm down to 3 then. Uh well, you're down you to 4. Able to rethink that. 4. Can you, you have can you rethink that, or you yeah, you can. I'll that? let you rethink it, but yes, just so the people, the party understands, the players understand. Whenever you're issued a compel, you must pay a fate point to refuse it. So, okay, um, yeah, I'll pay. I'll pay the fate. The the I will pay the fate point. Okay, cool. So I've deducted the fate point. You have four left, um, and then go ahead and uh, yeah. So that that's basically what he tells you all. He tells you that uh, yeah, some of them. A minority are pretty much okay with laughing, just, you know, maybe sliding off the face of the earth. But most of them are distrustful and very much dislike the people laughing and feel wronged by them, but would be open to peace, at least. Um, I have a question. Is it a single incident that has caused this disparity between the two, or, or is it a trend? It's, it's like the Hatfields and the McCoys. Uh, it started with that incident, and in the year, in like, you know, six years or so, okay, it's been, so they about, kill a few okay. of theirs, they get a few of theirs killed, okay. there's a retaliation, so by now there's a body count on both sides. And they, and I will say this, this, and this was your impression, Delta, 
both sides have done bad things to each other. There's no doubt about that. Mm. And they both feel that they have right on their side. Mm. William is going so, to consider this, and he's uh, going to tell everyone, well, in my experience, those who originally start to fight and refuse to finish it are those that always cause the problems. My suggestion is we find the people that, that committed that first wrong with the synth, bring them before both sides, and get them to agree that they were wrong and let all the dots lie with them. And anyone else want to jump or, in? Or or what? Well, the bottom line is, like he said, the history they have is going to make any sort of negotiations difficult. But what I think about William's proposal is that we're assuming a lot about being able to find those people. We're assuming we can convince them to do something they've not been able to do themselves for six years. Tell me again what the guy wanted us to do, the uh, guy that Delta encountered. So Marshall Colton, he wants you to upload, he wants you to upload a program which will restore the Securitrons to free will. So so he's he's saying they are sentient. They just have been programmed as as murder bots. I would ask this of Delta. Delta, if you had that, or do you have that software right now? Actually, yeah, he would have it right now. Yeah, you have it. So, ask. Uh, tell me this: can can you manipulate that? Is that, or can you tell just by looking at that? Is that something that is programmed to do specifically that thing, where it creates a self-aware creature, or whatever? What are they called? Sentient. Secure Sentient. Sentient. Well, no, no, no. But what are these things? Securitrons. Called? They're the called Securitron, Securitrons. Right. Right. Is that the only thing that it's programmed to do, or is it manipulatable? Can you tell that? Um, are, you, are you asking whether the program has a hidden yeah. has a hidden? No, feature? I'm asking him to get a more dynamic understanding of the function. If he needs to roll a perception, because I'm sure it's not going to be obvious without some sort of inspection. I, I, I think have to prove there, that. My friend, I, I feel like. Well, hear we me could, out, because this. No, no, Sorry, I am, ahead. I am helping you out. Like this is plot I, critical. As long as we can neutralize them and make them be like, oh, we're you're, we're subservient to you guys, then we can figure out like what their capabilities are. But let's just well, let's bring them along. let's take let's take Lady Bloodlust and set her aside for a second. Well, yeah. hang on, hang on, hang on. Remember, point of etiquette. Like I'm trying to give everyone a say. So, Sonny, if you ha- if you want to jump, well, in I wasn't done. I'm, no, I'm right no. in the middle of my thing here, uh, lady. Sonny kind of digs <laughs> Charles. <laughs> I gotta, so uh you know that <laughs> this, these players are gonna kill each other before no we get what happens but <laughs> you guys so are reason, all <laughs> you guys are gonna the reason i want to set that argument aside for a second isn't because i'm not interested in what she has to say not i'm interested <laughs> in knowing because at some point we were going to have to get delta to program the computers yeah. to do what we want whatever we decide we want is this software, if we agree to use it, is it pre? It's just going to automatically do what they s- said, which is make them sentient. Which we're not sure we want to do yet. If that's the case, we don't want to plug that in. But all right, we well, let me help. Let, me, let the let me jump in here for a second because okay. I can just say Delta's science skill of three and his lore institute knowledge is enough to, uh, you know, on a fairly easily verify that the program appears to do what Marshall Colton said. It it restores root. It basically is a hard reset of the kernel that that controls all the Securitrons. It restores them to factory settings, which in this case would be they have free will. Okay, Delta, is there any way you can utilize that to simplify your task of gaining control to be able to do specifically the task we want rather than a pre-program what we decide? Hmm. Because I'm I'm sure the tech can help somehow. Maybe, but I think... I think we just found a bargaining chip that could help resolve these two these two tribes. We literally have we literally have something 
where they could have given me a program that made it so that they would attack attack Laffin on site, but they didn't. This proves that they're not bloodthirsty. So you no. can confirm that? Okay. No. I guess he has, technically. That is what I asked him earlier, and he said that. So he had the three science. So the question still stands, can you use that to take complete control? Because right now we don't know whether we're even going to be able to do anything but shut it down with the IFF. We know for a fact we can do that. And we know for a fact we have another object device that will become, make them become sentient. So there's two of our choices taken care, care of. But if we don't want to make them sentient, we might still be able to use that tech to do something besides just shut it down, i.e. create bodyguards. Thank you. Yes. Is there, uh, Garrett, like, do I have to roll science to see if I can manipulate that program? You would have to do some research to know if that's and possible. Think, and I, also, what? I think we need to wait till we get in there. Sorry, Garrett. I think we need to wait till we get in there and see what the system looks like. And that was actually going to be my very next point, which is technically you don't actually have to make a decision yet because... Um, you have everything you need to go into the base. You could make the decision later, but that's up to the party whether you want to do that. Yeah, I, you... I recommend we use the the IFF to shut it down, go in, take a look around. We keep William. We No, no. William goes in. Those, those two are good together. Carl and the crazy bitch are going to stay outside and just wreck <laughs> anybody that tries to get in. <laughs> yeah, I'm good with that. That's an, that's an interesting strategy. Oh, no. Splitting the party. No. No, no, no. No, no, no. We won't split until we're all at the console. You're secure. The area is secure. Then we backtrack, find a bottleneck, and we set up shop. Nobody gets through. Oh, well, okay. while we're already in. Okay. Okay. Carl, um, I just one yes. question. What's that, William? <sighs> In situations like this, it's always it was always a good idea to consider what what's the worst outcome in this operation. Absolutely. Is it the worst yes, Same. it is for normal people. Yeah. The worst outcome, I believe, is we all die. That's the worst outcome. I think we all agree we, we don't want that to happen. Correct? That's so funny. I think there are worse outcomes than that. Don't you think? Right. I don't That's have your imagination, Miss Slaughter. I don't have your imagination. You've never I, seen a ghoul at all, ever, on this whole adventure. Or, I've dealt with you know. ghouls, damn. That's not the point. The point is... Is point. point is... I will do everything in my power to make sure we do this right. I will shoot whatever tries to kill us. I will cut down anything that tries to kill us. You can ask Mr. Delta here. How well we handle the buffaloes out in the desert. My main concern, and I'll just, well, I will be honest. My main concern is innocence getting hurt. And from what you told me, Mr. Delta, Mr. Cohen sounds like an honorable, amazing man that I would love to share tea with one day and with miss turner miss potter i do not want to see her hurt as well i will do everything in my power to protect y'all and them that's it that that's where i stand well said william fair enough do so before we venture into the vault do we maybe want to try talking to uh, Mayor Blackburn to see if maybe this program could be enough? I don't think it ultimately is, but it's... Do, do you think it would... Uh, I'm just going to let you all know that if you attempt to... If, if you tip your hand that you've been speaking to the sense to Mayor Blackburn, uh, that could... That, will him. that could be yeah. bad. Yeah, it's, that, look... Let's we keep want that them. Close. We want them. Let's just not talk about that to anybody. Also, here's some food for thought. We want 
Let's be quiet. You probably wouldn't want to go to the guy that's got a, a, a big problem with sense and tell him that you decided you're going to make even more sentient when? automatons. Yeah. <laughs> he would be pretty, I've, be pretty salty. I've, Delta's like, oh, I've... Mm, I guess I was being a little naive. And then Major well, Cat- I appreciate where that sentiment That's came something. from, though. That came from a good place. So Major I Cat- apologize. It would be a major critical mis- misstep. This is a delicate sense situation. Yeah, now you understand. Mm-hmm. All right. So I'm going to go stock up on my ammo and sharpen up my blade. Well, we're not back in town. We're on the trail. Yeah. What the no, no, fuck? you're you're at the no. You're in Laughing. You're in Laughing Town right now. Oh, we went back to Laughing. Well, that's where Delta came back to. He came back what? to. He came back. No. To, in fact, we guys... missed the whole time, whole scene where Sonny and I went to the halfway point. Remember, those two went to the halfway what? point. Yeah. William yeah. stayed. Yeah. Oh, I, that was not clear to me. I'm sorry. Okay, well then, okay. I I will allow that you are in the middle of the desert at the camp. Well, th- why didn't you say something? Because well, the captain had something ready for you. Because I, now we're halfway there. Yeah, we're not traveling another day back. Look, oh. all of, the thing that all these all of you guys are missing is that talk to me, goose. Selfish is not a dirty word. You need to fit your own. Freaking oxygen mask before you're able to help someone else. So, like all this reprogramming bullshit, just they need to help us. And we don't care about anything else. You're not trying to save the town. We didn't care about the town. The town was never our thing. Why are you guys assimilating and assuming burdens we don't need? Why Give are you me projecting what? your own morality on the entire party. No, you me, I don't want morality. I want no morality on this party. Exactly. Why are you projecting your absence of morality on the party when you already understand the basic psyche of the men around you? We don't share that. So why would you think that any kind of speech in that vein would persuade us to change our ways after a lifetime of well, living right, by let, a let, certain let me just Because... Let the, let the GM just jump in for a William second. because he's not a human being. He is a synth, and he is able to think of things logically. This, I, I put a hand on Delta's shoulder. This man and I shed blood in the desert. That makes oh. my brother. <laughs> All right, here. Okay, point of order from the GM here. So what I'm going to say is, if you guys are just role playing and talking it out, that's fine. However, if the party is at an impasse, then we have to we have to go to dice rolls. We have to go to a contest, and uh, and however that results don't is binding so a contest is not a fight but it's similar to a fight it basically okay. is a, it's basically a mental psychological battle so and the reason i'm saying that is because if there's literally like opposite positions in the party that are in rec irrec- like i'm not gonna go with the party or whatever then that's generally like if you're attempting to actually persuade them one if you're trying to persuade her or she's trying to persuade you this would be a contest so if you just are happy to, to... Mm-hmm. All right. so, so you guys let me know where you're at with that. Look, That's look, just letting you know. Me, when I say stuff, I'm just telling the seeds. That's it. Right, I'm not trying enough. at this moment. I'm just laying it down. All right. There's no battle here. There's just okay. people I got, I, I, okay. thinking about that Is, later. Yeah. Later you hear that in your own little head. Like, oh yeah, that was really freaking selfish. So why am I listening to him? Yeah. Like, I'm just is the party me. ready to move out to the vault? Absolutely. Yes. Yes, are we? All right. yes we are. We have talked for four fucking hours. Let's do this. Yeah, I have it. Right. 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 You're telling me you don't well, like that. We've, we've no, had a just... we've we've had a bit of a rough night, uh, but uh, <laughs> so. Dude, all right. This is what people want to see. <laughs> I sure hope so. <laughs> I sure hope so. Nobody wants to see like, oh, a happy group. Let's go kill the black wizard. No, people want strife. Want, and why, why, why does the wizard have to be black? What the fuck? Yeah. All right. Whoa. So, uh, yes, I think uh, 
here's here's uh, where we're going with it. Uh, we are going to we are going to narrate that you have traveled the desert and it took you all night. Uh, well, did you leave? Did you leave in the night or did you travel by day? Up well, that was unclear. I think we established it was morning when I found her. All right. Yeah, I, I think the fact that you guys spent all night arguing uh, argues for that. So, yeah, I'm going to say it's the uh, morning. You traveled excuse me, in I the like that arguing to be votes. <laughs> yes. Yes. All that time voting. <laughs> and did I say? Sorry, I, I just pack. I just, you know. Voting. So, uh, I would like everybody to roll their endurance on a difficulty three because it's a particularly hot day. So uh, roll, roll endurance and let me know your results. Okay. Four. All right. So you're doing pretty good, uh, Delta. Yeah, I started rolling actual dice. Um, I got six on my endurance. Six for William, good. Uh, Delta, you feel like rolling for me? I could. I would love it if you roll, roll, roll for you. She rolls, starts at zero. I rolled Wait, did you, did you change your... You, no, you still have six, okay. Uh, by the way, you can... I'm sorry, you can roll survival on this as well. Uh, I should have okay. mentioned that. Uh, you can roll survival if your survival's better than your endurance. So, Sunny, you're rolling on a two. Okay, I'm on a two. Come on, do me right, baby. Uh, and, final result is two. All right, that. Carl. What's uh, what's your roll? And your survival's a three, so I would roll on that. No! Come back, please. We lost him. No! Oh, oh, did we lose him? Oh, sorry, here no, I was sitting here. Found. Is he? Okay. Where, where'd can Carl I, go? Okay. Can I roll for him real quick? Just yeah, yes, please do. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll for oh, Carl. Oh, there he is. He's back. Hang Carl. on. He's back. All right. Don't give me a crap roll, okay. though. Carl's back. I don't know how that happened. I don't know. But uh, what was your roll on survival? Won't you? Um, I've got a four endurance, William. Uh, do you want me to roll for your endurance? If you would be so kind. Yes, sir. I'm going to roll for it right now. Okay, you got a six, like me. Outstanding. All right, so you guys, uh, you get there, and uh, the you, you make good time, and the desert doesn't uh, do too much harm to you. And you eventually, you approach the entrance of the or the perimeter, I should say, is a better way to put it. You approach the perimeter of what clearly is a vault. It looks just like the vault tech vaults that you've read about or heard about, but it looks different. It doesn't have any of the vault tech logos or anything. Oh wait, wrong. Are we, yeah, on. we're we're still outside, right? Because I'm going to sneak up and do Where some. Where did I have? I know checking I had for traps and stuff. Oh, here we go. Before I, the yeah, party there gets too is. close. All right. Uh, so is this a, is... Is that a parrot? What? What are you talking about? No one can hear that? Never mind. Never mind. No? <laughs> I don't know. All right. So uh, so you've all <laughs> uh, approached the area, and uh, you see the Securitrons. There's about, tw there's about like, uh, 30 of them that you can see, and they're kind of just rolling around in this perimeter area, and you can see the entrance to the to the vault is up here. But the weird thing about this vault is that it doesn't seem to have any uh, any of the symbols of Vault Tech at all. It, it's all like uh, it looks like a government facility, and it looks like it's been here for quite a long time. So okay, well. Uh, I'm gonna say, uh, you guys, uh, you're 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 looking at your pip boys, and uh, the IFF appears to be online. So, do you want to just, uh, what do you no. want to do? I don't. Uh, hang on, guys. Let me let me say something first. We do yeah. not want to. We want to get to the perimeter of that thing's defenses, and then we want to stand 
down while I sneak around and check because you've got to believe there's scents around here. There's no way they don't have eyes on this place all the time because it's kind of a focal out. point of the two places. So I think it would be beneficial to go and sneak around. Yep. And I'm going to help him out with that with a perception roll to see, to locate the best place to sneak. Give me one moment. Yeah, because we know what's inside the perimeter. Hey, uh, Garrett? Yeah? Am I able to do anything to cause a giant distraction that would draw attention to me and William? Mm, uh, before you do that, I got a, could. I got a three on the perception for to help out uh, Carl here. And uh, <laughs> what, what were you looking for? The, the, I'm looking the, for... <clears throat> I'm looking for sense because they know what we're doing and they would have the opportunity to be the first ones on site to possibly overwhelm us. And we don't know what other intentions could come from that. We don't know okay. what the potential is. We do know I they have you. the technology to, to create this software that's going to do what it's going to do, which is no joke. That shit's making them sentient. That's no joke. So there's no telling what their plans are. Now, so I don't trust that they're not here waiting to roll in after we set up. So, Sonny, are, are yeah. you are you saying you want to make a distraction to help them detect anyone that's following you or observing you? Yeah, you know, honestly, I would say I'm, like, sad that there's, like, no point for, like, boob flash or something. You know? No, because, yeah, we've got the ability to shut the security system down. It's not the issue. I'm worried about people trying to roll in behind us after we do it. Yeah, so, so he's, it he's saying, are you being followed or watched by the citizens of Laughing or Old Trails is the, is yeah. the question, right? Mm, so, what if uh, I, I, you know, throw up a small explosive? No, we don't want to do that right now. We, I mean, let, let me think about that. Well, I, I think it's a fair wanna... suggestion because she's saying create a distraction. You guys could then uh, you like know, observe. Out of the comp pump. You could observe mm. any uh, movement while she creates I have a distraction. Sneaking. I think no, because who are we distracting? The only thing we would do is draw eyes to that. Hey, hey magical right sneaking. now. Go do your worst. I will sit here and do okay. nothing. All right. Well, I'm, I'm going to say then, in that case, the result of the roll is you don't detect anyone. You appear to be alone. Okay. Because I didn't want to aggravate the security system, even yeah. though we can shut them off. <laughs> okay. Um, All right. Let, you Moment guys of truth. You're going to hit it? Who's got it? I I did my perception roll, and I got a three above one. Yep. I, I as I, And as I just said, uh, said you, no you feel that you are alone. You don't. Yeah, you haven't detected anyone. We're gonna hit the I, IFF. All right. So you right. approach the gates, and uh, several of the Securitrons approach, and and uh, immediately are like drawing weapons, and they're they're coming close to you, like, attention, citizen, stop where you are. This is a restricted government facility. And uh, you see, there's about four of them lining up in front of you, uh, ready to unload on you. Do you want to do anything? Activate the IFF. Uh, yeah. Uh, according to your according to your pit boy, it says I it says uh, identify friend foe marker active, and it's friend. linking. Friend. Oh. They're like, attention, it's citizen, it's stand down immediately. Engaging lethal force in five, four, uh, three, friend. Friend, two. I did we See, activate it? The Identify friend foe detected. Welcome, Enclave agents. You oh, are permitted oh, to pass. Oh, and they go, oh, and, they, oh, shit. and they all uh, they all immediately disarm and walk and move away from you. Nice. All right, guys. Okay. <laughs> I can't believe I got you at that. You did, man. I was like, wait, wait, back the fuck up, bitch. <laughs> uh, that, by the way, that is I'm counting. I, I'm going to say, all of you, uh, if any of you want to attempt to hide the fact that you just shat your pants, you're <laughs> Hey, hey, whoa. <laughs> All right, come on. Let's let's get inside the bunker. Let's see Gal what goodies we find. <laughs> it's like one of you. It's like <laughs> okay. someone shit my pants. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> which one of you? Which one of you shit my pants? You cowards. 
All right. So uh, I'm going to say uh, you're able to approach the vault uh, without incident, and you're able to enter the vault. And uh, let, let is there see. is there a giant wheel? Please tell me there's a giant. Wheel. Oh yes, no, there absolutely is. So uh, I I feel like I have. I really needed. Uh, just feel like the captain could have done better with the uh, with the music this session, but uh, hey, you can't worry about the music. Got to no, move I, on. This this will do. I can hear it. Um, <laughs> so <is>. so uh, <laughs> here's what happens. The you see the 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 iconic the the iconic cog shaped wheel of the of the vault opens, but you know it has a strange symbol on it, um, which. Uh, you're not sure what you're not. You've never seen anything like it before, and uh, I'll get you a picture of it next time. But uh, any case, it rolls back, and you see an elevator ahead of you. The walls are the, the walls look like uh, they are very stained with rust and decay, and uh, many of the lights are flickering. But it does appear that the facility is still active, and uh, you you see an elevator open before you. And it looks like you can step in. And uh, let me just see if I can find... I think this would be the appropriate time. Yes. Uh, there's a hallway that you have to go down first. And at the end of the hallway is the elevator. And this is what it looks like. So I will share... So this is the hallway that you're going down. <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah. So you get to the end of the hallway and you see the elevator is open and uh, you can step in if you're ready to go. William pulls out both of his revolvers and says to all of them, see y'all on the flip side, and steps in. Uh, Del Delta's going to pull out his 10 millimeter pistol and his combat knife. All right. And uh, I'm assuming the rest of you get in the elevator with him. Carl, yeah, he steps in. Oh, wait, pulls didn't out. you say that you were going to have Sonny yeah. and someone else stay outside or something? Well, no, not until we get to the terminal. I'm okay. just at the perimeter. Here and there. I'm not causing problems. I'm just watching. All right. So, uh, so you all get in the elevator, and the elevator doors close, and it starts to go down. And uh, at that moment, you, you see a screen activates on one of the ele on the elevator wall and it says ident system active ident requested and the cursor is blinking and i would say delta your science skill is high enough to recognize yep. that there is a secondary layer of uh of software obviously active there's a secondary firewall which is requesting a second level of identification Am I in the elevator? Here? Well, I asked you if you were getting in, and I didn't hear a no, so, so I'm assuming yeah. yes. So let's yes. roll my luck to assume that we can bypass that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yes, I will say uh, you can. You can roll. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna tell me, me who is gonna lead me. this effort. Tell me who's gonna lead this effort. Uh, I. Don't you guys want She's you want me to lead to see if I can luck. hack it? Not with six luck. Yeah, so, so what I'm... To... We could wing it. I could push yeah, like 17 okay, buttons. Here, and okay, let, yeah, let, let me just, let me just, I'm just going to help you out. Uh, Sonny, like you impetuously keys? run up to the console and start tapping keys. <laughs> so you may roll your luck. And then Delta, I will allow anyone who has science skill may add to a team effort here. Remember, you share in the consequences if you fail a team effort. Um, but anyone who has science skill can add a plus one to her roll. We got a six luck. So Delta, I'll assume you're going to help her. Yes. To help me without pain. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say Delta, this is a this is a difficulty five. Ooh, I have science. I got. Ah. Don't even bother. Delta has got. Do you want me to roll? No, 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 no. Listen, no. this is how a team effort works in fate, okay? Okay. In a in a team effort, one party member rolls oh. their relevant skill. Others who wish to pitch in oh, okay. who have who have a relevant skill, they they don't roll. They just add an automatic yeah. plus one. Now no, I'm others. I'm sorry. I, I meant to roll Sunny's fate dice for her because she's Oh I'm sorry. I, I totally I didn't, oh yeah, sorry about that. No, no, I, I miscommunicated that. 
So Okay. All right, yeah, Sonny, roll your luck, and then, um, yeah, go ahead. And plus one from me, too. Science one. I'm, I'm pitching for Sonny as well, for luck. All right, what's our roll? Um, grand total of six. All right, so you got a six, oh, and then we're going to add, does that, did we add <laughs> our plus it. ones yet? Yes, it's a nine. That, those oh. are with the plus ones. Oh. Okay, so actually you're just barely succeeding. Yeah. That sounds you're kind just... of cheaty, because, like, I have a six. That's the dice. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You do have yeah. some fate points. <laughs> All right. I, I... This is going to be a two-part episode, so your fate points will carry over to the next session. So what it's up to you whether you want to spend them or not. Six. So what was our actual roll, like, number-wise? Um, you got two minuses and a plus. And a zero. Ugh. I'm not going to Vegas with you, baby. But all right. Well, it's better. <laughs> you, you probably wouldn't have won. You probably you. wouldn't. I'm teasing you. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. All right. Just teasing. Just teasing. Okay. Well, no, uh, no. here's what happens, Sonny. Yeah. Because I you. Failed. You start typing rapidly in the keys, and uh, you suddenly get uh, and. Ident fail, and ident fail, and defense systems activated, which causes you to even more furiously pound the keys, and then you just start button mashing a whole bunch of different shit, oh, yeah, and baby. then you mash accidentally it. mash it. Yeah, you just mash it, and then uh, and then your dog goes Whoop! and jumps up and sticks his paw on the keypad, and somehow accidentally enters a root command which accesses a help uh, uh, assistance. Scorchy to the rescue. And so you suddenly hear, you suddenly see uh, a line of code that says activating, uh, activating Enclave Leadership Assistant. And you suddenly hear a voice come over and over an intercom says, <clears throat> Assistance program activated. I am John Henry Eden, and I am here to assist you. Welcome Enclave agents. Am I to understand that you have entered this facility without the required credentials? Yes, sir. Thank you for your honesty, soldier. You should be aware that should you be found to be lying, pending a further investigation, you will be executed summarily. However, your initial identify friend foe system appears to be intact. I assume you are here looking for the Enclave Resource Motherlode. Would that be correct? You can only assume he must be referring to the dead man's camp. Yes, that is correct. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then I'm sure, as you are also aware, that our resource hoard is reserved only for reactivation of the Enclave mission plan. Am I correct in assuming that you mean to reactivate the Enclave and uh, remove all agents from hiding and return to active protocols? Um, Not at this time, sir. No, I don't think so. We are the... Well, in that case, I will have to ask you to leave this facility immediately or activate all defenses to destroy you. No. Hold on, Gary. Hold on. I, I haven't for I haven't was, that, that happened. You can't take that back. That happened. So your right. response is, look, look, is look, look, look. Let me leave. Like, let, okay. My dude, let me leave. I am the Never only one. That let me leave. I'm gonna go back. Uh, okay, so uh, so just so you know, if there's a disagreement about which player gets to go, I'll have you roll initiative, and that'll resolve it. But uh, unless uh, you're willing I'm to yield, you. William, I'll walk Why right is... back out the elevator. Why is somebody Bye, leaving? I'm leaving, so we don't get all get in trouble. I answered you honestly. You think your leaving is gonna keep it from acting? Up you guys are stuck out? in the elevator. You can't go anywhere. He just exactly. all he said was he's saying, "Are you attempting to reactivate the enclave?" I see one choice. Anybody else? Let, let uh, me just help you out here, because it's getting late. <laughs> uh, in the words of Ghostbusters, when somebody asks you if you are a god, you say yes! <laughs> yeah. so, guys, we guys, the, guys, the answer is I yes. Owe you all one we had to find out what our options were. <laughs> okay, we know we have one option. All right, so agree. Yes, sir. We are here for that reason. Yeah. Ah, well, in that case, standing down, standing down extermination protocol. 
Very well. Uh, at the bottom of this elevator, you you may encounter some turrets which are outside of my control. You seem well armed, so I trust you'll be able to destroy them. I'm uploading to your pit boys. Good on you for keeping con keeping your enclave equipment intact during your years of hiding. Uh, you may use those to note the positions of the turrets here. You suddenly see all of your pit boys flash with um, l on your map. You suddenly see the a bunch of turrets are being pointed out, which are waiting for you at the bottom of the elevator. And judging by the rate and speed of this elevator and the remaining time left in the to in your descent to the bottom, you have roughly ten seconds to prepare yourself for the defense. I will see you on the other at the end of the other hallway, and then you hear the intercom click off. Everyone so get you have me. and I pull out my guns. So so you get you basically I'm going to give you guys all like one turn to prepare an, an an to create an advantage if you want and that's up to you if you want to try and create some kind of advantage but does ever is everyone clear on what's happening? Okay, Not guys, exactly. We're up against a bunch of turrets and grenades. What do okay. we got? So what so what John Henry Eden just told you is that at the bottom of this elevator the doors are going to open and he just gave you the locations of all these turrets. He doesn't control them. So he has nothing there's nothing he can do. There, there are five groups of laser turrets that are going to target you the second you get off the elevator, and he just pointed out their location. So it gives you a slight element of surprise. Uh, but yeah, so at the bottom of the elevator, you're going to have five turrets shooting at you. My dude, is there anything that I can throw at these turrets that's nearby? I have a couple throwing knives, but other than that, is there anything else? Because I could disable. I got Hevo. Uh, I got in, in fate in fate rules. Here, here's kind of what you can do. You he can. <laughs> pick a pick a relevant skill and roll it to try and create an advantage. If you want to do a team effort, you can, but you can all individually do this. So, for example, if Delta, you know, wants to try and prepare a hacking program with his science skill, he could. Um, and what stealth. this does is it generates an aspect in the scene which can help you. What about stealth? Yeah, so, that's like, great. that's a great one. Let's go with that first. So, Carl, uh, roll your stealth skill to see if you can find, you know, find a position... And, and just like make yourself harder to detect initially by the turrets, like make it harder for them to tar lock onto you. Uh, yeah, you oh. could do that. Stormcrow, that's right. a plus four. Garrett, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna roll for him first. I'm gonna roll for him real quick. You're rolling for Carl. Yes. Yep. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna say it's a difficulty. Uh, it's a difficulty three. He gets a five. All right, so you've successfully created an advantage, which is a. Uh, uh, I'm going to put that on your card here. Hang on a second. Uh, where is Carl? All right. So I'm going to say you've created the advantage. Um, carefully, carefully crouched. Carefully crouched, small target. So what do that. I see as far as the space? Is this and I'm going to give you can... one free info. Is this something we can push through? All right. And then... Okay. You got to understand... This is 10 seconds. You guys don't have time to, like, talk it over and strategize and create a big old chess plan. Like, literally, your character... This is what's happening. Your characters had 10 seconds to react, and they just did whatever was top of mind. So in your case, Carl, you just, like, crouched and got ready and made yourself a smaller target. Okay. You're done. You're out. Next got action it. goes to... Uh, I'm going to say Delph... Uh, William spoke. So what do you want, William? What do you, what do you want to try and do? Athletics. I'm gonna be so hard to hit that it gives me a better chance to shoot at the target at the turrets. Athlete. Uh, yeah. So you're in an elevator. So I'm gonna say that anything you could do athletically to help yourself might be a, a, a hard sell. So I'm gonna say that's a difficulty oh. four. No, oh, he could be up to the ceiling ninja style. I. Um... If I can crouch, yeah, he can tumble out. He can somersault out. All right, fair enough. I will say uh, difficulty three. All right, here we go. Oh, my God. I got... Okay, hold on. <laughs> Did you hit your head? <laughs> I got a six. Oh. A six? All right, so success with style. So I'm going to say uh, cat-like... A cat-like... Uh, tumble prepared, and I will give you uh, two free invokes of that. 
All right, mm. and then Delta, what what are you doing? Uh, Delta is straight up just going to activate uh, major major guts, and what he's going to do is use utilizing the position that he sees on the pit boy. He's going to pull. He's going to pull out his. He already has his ten millimeter in hand, so he's going to position himself in a way. The moment the elevator drops, that he can start firing on on the closest turret. So, so you're you're saying he's so explain that again? Okay, basically, when the el- when the elevator doors open, he wants to be in the exact physical location to where he has line of sight towards the turret, so he can start firing before the turret fires. Yeah, right oh, over right. my head. You know what? With me doing the athletics, that okay. gives him the advantage also because they're going to be shooting at me when I come out of the elevator. All right, oh, yeah. hold that thought, William, because that actually is. You can shoot over. I'm you, I'm going to give you the temporary aspect a gutsy strategy, Delta. Okay. And I'm going to give you uh, one free invoke of that. Uh, but I'm going to say this is a this is actually you compelling yourself because you're letting uh, guts take take over. And he may do things that are out of your control, so I'm, I'm giving you a fake point. Okay. And then, William, uh, you mentioned that you could help him. So this is the way that these invokes you're getting on these advantages you're creating. Technically, you can pass your free invoke to someone else if you want. So if you want to, like, represent that you're helping him, you can invoke your aspect you've created. Uh, remember, after your free invoke, you may also be able to spend a fake point to invoke that aspect right so so anyway that's for later though william what would you like to do with your time to oh, wait you already did that you did that yep. i think we got everybody sunny oh, wait no sunny we need you uh what you need what? yeah all right what do you want to roll to create an advantage here hmm i think you should just roll luck okay luck on a difficulty three i'm good let's do that Oh, you did already roll luck you once this scene. Boys are gonna. Oh, so I have no oh, luck. No, but that, that was you're a... Points and all that crap. <laughs> this is a different scene. <laughs> is it? Uh, do I get it back for a different scene? Because I'm pretty sure I do. You do have you do have sneak. You could roll that. It's it's all right. I'll I'll let uh, the cat the GM will allow it. So uh, yeah, go ahead and roll your luck because really? I think it's gonna be fun. But I pretty much kind of thought that, like, anytime I looked at the scene, I would have like the magical powers returned to me. Isn't that the case? We're in the same scene. I'm I'm making an exception though. GM ruling. Yeah. Uh, Top. Go ahead and roll your luck. Yeah. He's rolling. As a writer, I felt a scene break. But (laughs) I don't don't want to push that on you. That's why he's giving us a a break. It's a Sunny, Sunny, take yes for an answer. Yes, I take yes, and I'm so thankful. That's Somebody right. Bow before me. No, I'm just kidding. All right. What, <laughs> what's the roll? Low. The grand, the grand yeah, result is a six. Lower than I thought. All right. You succeeded with style, so I'm going to say that uh, you literally uh, blunder. You're, you're going to blunder right into the firing solution. Heck yeah. And uh, you're going to you're going to cause cause a targeting error. Sweet. Nice. I am and uh, you get two free invokes of that. Bring it. All right. And so uh, so then, so now let me just reset a little bit. So in that 10 seconds after John Henry Eden clicked off, you all raced around doing, you know, preparing your defenses. And then you get to the bottom of the, of the elevator. The doors open and you see before you... Um, a complete, you see a whole bank of laser turrets and they're all and they're all pointing yeah. right against you. And you are in deep doo-doo. Biggest. And so we will resolve what happens in the next episode. Next oh, time. God. Oh, God. The man. man, we just got all set up. I had a feeling, man, he was about <laughs> Three quarters of the way through, asking us all what we were going to do, and I started thinking. Maybe you know that's what you're out. used to. Girls bring you three quarters of the way. Hanging. Yeah. So, right. so that's where we're going to leave it. So the doors open, the turrets are all, uh, and uh, that was when the credits start rolling on the episode.
Actually, Talk about that, Amazon. You can't do this shit. Yes. That is We're four deep. and a half hours in. <laughs> That's We're four and a half hours in. And you guys, yeah. I never expected you guys to like... Of course, I never do. But uh, you guys it's turned it into a giant fight <laughs> over the, the sense and everything. So I love it. You decided to spend all your time on that, so I'm okay I with it. I promise I will turn everything uh, into a giant face. I, 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 I blame Sassy Slaughter. All right. Now, if you guys could just hang on one more minute in the voice oh, Discord, sure. I just want to, like, uh, okay. well, connect with you guys on a possible let's future strategy. Yes, please. Okay. So, so I will be on Discord in just a couple minutes, and I just – it's one okay. quick thing, and then we're done here. So I will thank you, my dear players – and uh, I will you, dismiss sir. you now. Yes. And we will wrap this thing up. Yes. Bye, Good evening. Everybody. Goodbye. Alvita. Well, that is our episode. This has been Fallout Dead Man's Cash, a fate quest season of episodes upcoming. I am your host, Captain Garrett, your GM as well. And uh, there will be more adventures in the wasteland for our intrepid heroes. So come back. Make sure you have like, subscribe, and notifications on for more. And that is our show for tonight. So until next time, my dear sailors and star knots, this is Captain Garrett saying, I will see you out there in the wasteland.